people it is thursday the 21st of march welcome to tda the day after your favorite news platform and the home of popular culture as defined by the culture and as always i am one of your lovely hosts for today my own royalty and they call me e-man the pro-black activist tda producer and news analyst melanin jam packed that is right you know what yeah it's a special day today mm. and not just because the lord has blessed us with life and we get to the TDA. No, it's Ramsey's birthday. Big up Ramsey. Big up Ramsey. Ramsey's one of my favorite people, you know. Where's the horns and stuff, Ben? Ben has been a hater, man. You know how he feels. You know how he and Ramsey do. <laughs> Ramsey's <laughs> hearing the imaginary horns at the moment. Yes. The horns are meant exactly. in the mm-hmm. spirit. All right, so my gripe is that we had. I'm not sure I can hear you in the mic, you know. One, two, one, two. <clears throat> is that good? One second, y'all. Brent's got a gripe. I like that word, gripe. A gripe is that. It sounds so serious. Hmm. It sounds like, wow, it's what I told me off about. Yeah, I have a gripe. Uh, okay, here's a gripe. We have a, an equally important person in our lives oh. whose birthday was yesterday and we didn't make this hubbub, <laughs> this fuss. Where were you, Esther? I was doing, I had things doing. You should have reminded me. No, I shouldn't have. Because you were there texting me for other things. Well, that was shade. So <laughs> that needs to be texted. <laughs> um, first of all, you've known this person more than longer than I've known this person. Um, I met this person once. I've heard this person twice. Second time was when I saw them. Mm. Um, had a conversation with them and I retained information. Ah. So I thought if I'm going to meet somebody for the first time and I remember this information, how much more... Somebody who's been in his life for 10 plus years. Mm. Alas. 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 But mm. big up, David. Big up, David, man. Happy belated birthday. First of all, you could have said that in the voice note we sent. You didn't say nothing. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? You're coming on air like... now, talk about how belated. Don't, first don't fraud. belate nothing. Absolute fraud. Why? It's You're you phony. <laughs> you are. You, you like you imagine. Haters, man. Anyway. You're not going to invite me in the voice note. No, but you're, the shame is for both of you anyway, to be fair, to share. Because you've known him just as long, maybe even longer. From mm. what I'm hearing, you knew him I before Brent. no shame at all. That's all right. I know you don't, but you should. I, you sh- had- I <laughs> should not because <laughs> he's never told me when his birthday is. Never. And he didn't even tell me the other time. I wasn't in the room. Allegedly. I would have remembered. Allegedly. You didn't remember something else. That I, was actually your business. I... So I don't know how you would remember something that. So was it on air? What? What Mark said. Yes, because it right. was during the interview. Wasn't during it? the interview? Yeah, because mm-hmm. no, 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 it was before the interview. When you guys were going back and forth, you were tussling. Yeah. When you were saying about you know, you're not caring, da da da. He was like, oh, no, I came in because we've got an interview. Yeah. I'm not coming the rest of the week, da 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 da. He said it. Yeah, that's awkward. Mm, I'm wondering why Ezra didn't even hear that. I think, I think you just tune out things that you don't want to hear. If it sounds like bad news, you know. Maybe it was... You only hear bad... Actually, yeah. Maybe right. it was because he had said something that was erroneous. And I was like, ha. Huh. So you're still in a state of shock? Maybe. Mm, possibly. Maybe. Who knows? Because I swear I remembered me saying, oh, cool, then don't come in tomorrow. And maybe even the next day. Yeah, well, to be fair, then technically one the next day. No, 100%. But I remember saying that, mm-hmm. but I can't remember him saying that. Yeah, but then he said next, next day too. I'm gonna, That'll be tomorrow. I'm gonna, <laughs> if, if I see him this evening, I'm going to basically look to lock his mic off. Nah, man, don't do that. Too late. I've already decided I'm going to do it. Yeah, but you can't do that. You can't abuse your power like that. How old is Ramsey? Uh, it's given 32. 30 something. What does he do? I made that up. When he celebrates his birthday. What do you all do at work? Uh, he gives he gives praise to God, man. Maybe we'll have birthdays and like, because when I was younger, oh my gosh, you know, birthdays in Nigeria used to be lit. 
Over here, you are bringing dead Haribo sweets and whatnot. Now you can't really bring sweets because people got allergies and shit. <laughs> in Nigeria, people used to bring rice, like coolers of rice, like packed up food. It was a whole thing. That was a lit, man. Got to see whose jollof rice was nice throughout the year. That was a mm. good time. Then you have like drinks, like a full-size drink. Oh, that was a good time. Lunch is sorted on someone's birthday. <laughs> you ain't got to worry about nothing. You got a whole plate mm. of jollof and chicken. What does a full size drink oh. mean? What's what? What does a full size drink mean? It's not a little cappy sun crap. <laughs> it's a full size soft drink, 250 mil. Ah. What was it? Do you remember what it was that you said, Iman and I say? There is Nigerian English, by the way. And saying so Brent and me is definitely Nigerian English. Because <laughs> I remember my mum, my mum loves to create English boy. So I used to say and me, mm. but then she always says it's an I. That's the correct grammar. Mm. Or do you remember what it was that you said? I it's say. like something to do with carrying or bringing something, but it was used oh in yeah the wrong. yeah 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 that's a very Nigerian thing as well. Like oh, like yeah like picking something up will be like I'll pick it. No, mm. that don't sound like me. I'll pick it. Come. That's stupid. <laughs> that is being an egg. <laughs> but no, there's definitely Nigerian you. English there. Like Nigerian English is so funny to me, man. There's a lot. Nigerian English is so funny to me. When you say it again, I will I will point it out. Yeah, yeah. dude, I, I'm I'm so intrigued. I try to remember. I try to think about it, but how will I know? I don't know. It's wrong. How will I know? <laughs> 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 but yeah, man, good times. But mm -hmm. who's in the chat this morning? Are you saying good morning to anybody? Are you beefing people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, have you typed something in the chat yet? No, why? To see. Oh, let's see, honey. Right. That you you say good morning, but let me sort that out. <laughs> Good morning, Mel. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Christy. Good morning, Raheem. Good morning, Big Miles. Good morning, Teddy Tibbs. Good morning, Imi Snow Globe. Good morning, Everest. Good morning, Maggie. Good morning, Priz. Good I like morning. Teddy Tibbs' name. It gives me, um, what's that guy? Maybe it's Chris. I was singing. Uh, Can we talk, guy? Kevin oh, Tambo? Kevin, Kevin Tambo. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Kevin Tambo. Um, good morning, Tintin. Good morning, T. Sorry, good morning, guys. Pray for me. I had an interview on Tuesday and got the offer yesterday. Wonderful. Interviewing with another company today and hoping to land this job. Oh, who's that? Oh, hoping to land this too for negotiation. Oh, I love Wonder. this. Oh, baby. Baby. That's a more yeah, one, no. baby. She was <laughs> both friends, so she could basically <laughs> negotiate. Yeah, that's all. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get it. It's so annoying. Nah, nah, I like the energy, man. Mm -hmm. This type good. of creation uh, have confidence, the man. When TMB is up and running and I'm tussling with you in the boardroom. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you love it as I, much I, then. I don't think you will ever need to be tussling. <laughs> I won't. I actually you won't. won't. ever, man. Like, I actually won't. Good morning, OMB. Good morning, Star Crew. Okay. Good morning, SLM86. Good morning. Sakura, you will never live that down. Never. I hope you know. Like, you should have <laughs> never brought that into this chat. Good morning, SLM86. Good morning, Fernand. Good morning, DCF Books. Good morning, Andrew Archibald. Uh, Ramadan Mubarak. Good morning, Rahama. Oh! <laughs> Rahama Bekele, Bekele, Bekele. Uh -huh. This <laughs> hell is that? <laughs> she she's one of my crushes back in the day. Oh okay, morning yeah, babes. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. She's now married though, of the market. And you're doing horns for someone else's wife. <laughs> Somebody get slapped yeah. in the mouth. She's a, <laughs> <laughs> she's a very good friend. She's wearing. She should be wearing merch right now. Okay. Mm. All right. Love Big that. Big up. Um, morning, good babes. morning. T. Good morning. J W. Good morning. Oh. Who's that in my home? <laughs> that? Let me go to your picture. Wonderful okay. Scene, oh, splendid. <laughs> what I'm saying is that I think Imi deserves some horns to swing. <laughs> that's what I've got to say. Indeed. What a talented queen, man. What a babe. What mm. a babe. Mm -mm -mm. Good morning, Beautiful. Esquire. Good morning, Noreen. Good morning, you all pray for me too. I had an interview yesterday and one today. My contract ends next week. I need one of these. Amen. You get it. You, you will get it. It's it. already yours. It is already yours. It's Amen. Already yours. Excellence in the chat, man. Mm -hmm. I love this. Love this energy. Uh, we need horns for Ajani's BAFTA nomination. Hey. Big up Ajani. Hey. Big up Ajani. Big up Ajani. All right. Um, 
I definitely didn't bring it in. Brent just started out. Nah, it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> no, one, no one believes that story, I'm afraid. Sorry, Should have corrected it the first time it happened. It's too late. It's stuck now. Good morning, Paul. Well, I need to contact you. I need something mixed and mastered. It's up for I'll hit you up afterwards. Good. Uh, good morning, Cindy M. I think that is it. Yeah, morning, people. Mm-hmm. I hope you guys are good. Everyone's feeling blessed. And I pray you guys are waiting on good news. We'll get it. That's it. Amen. All right, so Spotify comments. We've got from Lynn M32. It says, what an amazing guest. So transparent and honest. Absolutely. Big up, Mark. Enjoyed all the gems he shared. Shout out. Sorry, not shout out. There's no out in there. Shout to, <laughs> <laughs> shout to Estelle. Ask all the best questions. Oh, thank you very much, babes. Riego says, fantastic guest and a great episode. Keep going, guys. Two exclamation marks. When you get two exclamation marks, it's serious. It's serious. Big up you guys over listening big up, big on up. Spotify. We appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Um, is there anything else we need to talk about? That was my question. Yeah, I think I did. Mm. Everyone else good though? Yeah. This thought just came into my head though. Why you, drag, why you guys, yeah. Mind? When when you um listen to podcasts and whatnot, yeah. Yeah. Do you prefer like let's just say you had a visual on Spotify, like yeah. we do as well, right? So guys, remember we're on Spotify with the visual as well. Watch it. Would you prefer the Spotify or the YouTube? I'm a YouTube babe, man. Mm. I like, I don't know. I just like, I like YouTube. Like YouTube's kind of become my, in way, way, become like my new Netflix. Yeah. So much information on there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm more, I would watch it on YouTube. Okay. But then when I'm driving and stuff, Spotify is where I go. But when I'm at mm. home, I never ever, I don't open Spotify to watch stuff on Spotify. This is what I was thinking. This is what I'm asking, isn't it? To see. I did that only once to be fair. Mm. I, don't, I don't I can't say why, just in case. <laughs> but, yeah. I had to get some tea, so I had to do what I had to do. But <laughs> listen to Spotify when I'm at home feels weird. Mm. Mm. So I'm more YouTube. Okay, yeah. okay. Brent, what about you? What's the question? Do I watch, do I watch YouTube or Spotify? Yeah. What's your preference? Mm-hmm. For Podcast. music? Podcasts. Oh, podcasts, Spotify. As in, like, if there was a visual, you would watch it on Spotify? Over if YouTube. If there was a visual? Yeah. Mm. No, I watch it on YouTube. Mm. Okay. Because mm. I have YouTube Premium. Mm-hmm. I don't pay what? Mm. 50p? Like a, a year? Anyway. Um, so can I, before I say that, big up Noreen. She said, I still miss you yesterday. I miss you too, girl. But then I heard these stoners talking and I just said, oh, the God. <laughs> what would <laughs> what would the Lord do? <laughs> um, what's your invoice saying? Do you have an invoice? Yes, it's me. Oh, okay. Because, okay. sorry, everybody yeah. said it's Morgan Freeman. <laughs> 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 she said yeah even as she's typing it she's like Morgan Freeman's telling me to type this that's insane that's wild she lived in a Netflix show that's lit though but that's not true she, it's, it's a joke obviously I don't believe it's a joke that Morgan Freeman was telling her to type it <laughs> no but it's like the voice that is in her head is Morgan Freeman that's a joke I don't believe that because Ebony, remember some people Ebony has prior she would bust joke like that <laughs> so she's like prior you know 100% she bust joke like that That'd be lit though, but um, no, in my head it's me. So it's audible? Yeah. Like I can't hear it, you know, if I heard it, I'd like that as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'd run. I'd run with myself. Well, but it's know. in my, but it's like I can hear myself think. This is what I was trying to say to a friend. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like obviously my mind is processing it, but I can hear it. I can hear it in my brain. I can, the brain version of hearing is at work. So it's not audible. What does audible mean? Like, out, uh, you can hear it. Yeah. No, you'll never be able to hear it. No, no, no. No, not no, us, no, but no, you. No. you. I can hear it, though. It is audible. Because otherwise, how would I hear it? Okay, cool. And how would I know it? Is no, yours but, not audible? No, but this is why no. I was saying to him what's yesterday. What's yours? It's about communication. Because right, well, what's <laughs> It's this? about communication. <laughs> no, because I was saying to him, yeah, um, that if basically we were to connect our brains, yeah. Yeah. So literally, the brains are fully connected. Yeah. And free voices. Like from... Stephen Hawking. Did it connect his brain? Yeah, but it's it's a bit different. It's a bit okay. Different, right. But let's just say that there was a way of connecting all three of our brains now. Yeah. And you, and these three brains were talking. Mm-hmm. Would you be able to identify which one is yours? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Because I, 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 I know how I talk and I know how I think. No, how how you think aside, right? But in terms of the sound that you can't hear, but the sound. But it's my voice. I would hear it. This is what I was saying. But even it's though you like, can't hear it. But it's still my voice because it's not like it's yeah. higher or like lower or a different pitch. Mm-hmm. It's me. Yeah. So what are you hear? Like, how is yours not audible? What is it that's going on? In there? 
Um, I'm, yeah, the thoughts and whatnot. It's just not, there's no voice attached to it. <laughs> just words. Mm, yeah, but you know you can communicate without actually speaking. Yeah. So that's what it, that's what it is. It's just, they exist and I can feel them. I can see them in my mind's eye so I can process it. Oh my gosh, so when I you're thinking. It and identify it. So that's the same process when you're thinking as well? Yes. There's no voice attached to your thinking? There's no voice, no. So what, Brent, if you say to yourself, oh, I need to go to gym today, and after that I need to go to the Sainsbury's, and you think that in your head, what is that like? It's as though my thoughts have place in my brain, and it, it's having place, it's seen, mm -hmm. and it's just acknowledged. Okay, so are you kind of seeing the words though? Yes, in my mind's eye. Like you've seen the letters, like written out? No, no. I think we're talking about the same thing, but I think how Brent's saying it it's is, different is how yeah, saying. this is what I was trying to This is freaking me out. Yesterday. No, but this is why I, I needed you to exactly, understand yeah. Jordan was saying exactly. that there is an audible voice yes. attached to these yes. thoughts. Exactly. But you're... What, this is what we got yesterday. Why are you yesterday? now saying easy high when you're already trying to convince me that you're all in the same time? No, 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 because it's different. Because you know those people that hear voices? I don't hear voices. He hears his voice. It's an audible voice. It's audible. See how she said Morgan Freeman? The fact that you can actually distinctly, <laughs> distinctly say it's Morgan's. He can hear his voice. And when it is that he's having conversations, there are different voices that he is hearing. It's audible. Yeah, I hear one voice. And that's and that's why <laughs> he, that's mine why and the Holy Spirit. He, that's why, <laughs> so come on. <laughs> and that's so why he on. said sometimes he has to check to see if the person he is with it says something. moves. No, no, moves because they just heard what he heard. Uh, mm. Oh, my mind is different. <laughs> <laughs> that is a different level, honey. I don't move to see if anyone because I know it's this is just up here. That's so interesting. I find it's just, it's, it's dope. And this is like when he's just like on a normal day, la -da 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 -da, sober, just here. Yes, he's for his entire life. Oh my gosh. Yeah. What was the first power? What was, uh, sorry. So, so basically, he, I think it is, to be honest. Wait, what was it? Makes, it makes conversations it's like spicy. So he said <laughs> for the first 21 years of his life. That's what I was going to ask you. Right? To say. Mm -hmm. When people weren't talking, they weren't thinking. And what? <laughs> Say it back again. He thought when people talk, it's yeah. because they're thinking. Okay, so when you're quiet, there's nothing going. Yeah. yeah. So there is no uh, processing happening. Okay. If there is um, the well, sound coming from your mouth, yeah. it's because your brain is thinking. So there's okay. So, so like the computer's on. So when nobody was talking, mm. he thought everybody was just sleep. No, just <laughs> <laughs> nothing was going on. Why do you think that? That's just how we saw the world. That's so interesting. Look yeah, up yeah, Jordan yeah. there. Yeah. That's so interesting. But I guess that's because that's how it is for him, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I don't hear voices. It's more like my like I hear my thoughts. I don't know if that makes sense, but I hear my thoughts. Mm -hmm. And even now I'm doing it, it's my voice. It's me. That's so interesting. God is good, man. Because honestly, yeah. Do, do you see that first clip that... Uh, that I played. Nah. So, in fact, let me play it for you quickly. Uh, sorry, you're here again. All different types. Can you, can you call in? Who's that? Oh, all different types. Yeah. Go get everybody it's playing for. This, this what do you mean playing for? First of all, keeps saying that people are playing for. What is? What is this? What are you talking about? We know some people. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Voice to skull technology. So you keep saying this. So I'm going to type it in in Google to see what this is. Yeah. Ask Jerome. Why yes. why why are you doing that, Brittany? And then play this thing for um for Esther. So this is where big up Marissa as well. She she's the one who sent this through. So I could ask her so she could try to make light of this. Alright. So I found out a few days ago that not everyone has the ability to speak in their brain. And the first person that I asked if they could do it was her. And turns out she can't. So I asked a bunch of people to ask me questions. So I could ask her so she could try to make light of this wild situation. So like if you look like I could look at myself in the mirror, talk right. in my head without opening my mouth. You physically can't do that. No. And what would happen if you tried to do that? 
I have tried to do that since learning that an internal monologue exists, and I end up speaking out loud to myself, so most of my conversations are out loud. I feel like this information to the people that can think in their head um, <laughs> is a lot more like exciting news. I've talked to a few people that, that can't do this, and they seem less enthused as the people that do have this internal monologue. Correct. Does that make sense? Yep. Right. I'm very confused as to why people are so perplexed. All right, by so it. the probably most requested question was how do you read? Like when I read, I could I I hear the words in my head. I don't know how you could possibly read without not hearing the words. When I read, I can see the sentence structure. Like in my head, every sentence has a shape, so you can see like the shape of the sentence. Um, and then also, like, keywords will pop out, and I can file those away into my, like, concept map. So at the end of reading something, I can have a concept map of the main topics that I read about. And I tend to move my lips when I read. So, like, essentially, I'm saying it out loud, but it's in, it's just not, like, audible. So do you visualize the setting when you're reading a book? No, it's not, like, images. It's just the words. So did you... Do you like reading, like, fiction books, like, where you have to put yourself in a situation? I never really enjoyed reading. At and all? I think maybe that's why. Like, I can see the story plot. Are you a fast reader? Yes, very fast reader. Okay, we could have a 100-question test. No, She's done when I'm on question 12. I'm not even kidding. It is superhuman. It's not, it's not fair. Um, how do you know what you're thinking if there's no words? Because I can see it. I think that's why this whole thing is going viral, is because people like me can't understand how you get through a day without talking to yourself. It's, I, I don't know. I just feel like the information is in there, and I can pull it forward if I want it. Like, it's all of those, like, it's like files. There's categories of information in my head, and I can pull them to the front if I need them. But I, I feel like I could do that. Like, if I'm studying, I could, like, pull things out. But just, like, if I'm sitting, and, like, I have a thought, or someone is, like, walking by, and I, and I have a thought about that person, I'm, like, talking to myself about that. Does that not happen to you? No. Uh -uh. If I have a thought, normally I, I say it out loud. Can't do, this. Yeah. do you daydream often? No, never. Hardly ever. I actually can't think of a time that I've daydreamed, I don't think. Yeah. All right, so I've just asked just Gemini thinking. what is voice-to-skull technology, and yeah. it says, or she says, voice-to-skull technology is a concept that claims to allow direct transmission of sound into a person's head by passing the ears. It's important to note that there is no scientific evidence to support the existence of voice-to-skull te devices. I don't understand. That doesn't help at all. Anyway, so I've also typed it in Google, <coughs> and um, this guy left this post. I'll quickly read it. Uh, subject matter is, how can I disable or block voices, voice to skull communication? Hey guys, I'm looking for help because at times I've been on the verge of suicide. Ah. I've never had a mental illness, and I'm not on drugs or alcohol. My wife says it's Satan. So <laughs> I had an exorcism done. Still, there's what worse. Is it huh? Sorry, carry on. Sorry. Still there, <laughs> worse than ever. It's been six months now. It's by far the worst thing that's ever happened to me. I need desperate help. I'm a, I am very by the book. I'm a very by the book Christian man with a family of three. About six months ago, we were all at a hotel. Wife left out of town accent. Sorry, I can't. There's mistakes in this. Mm. I woke up 18 hours later, groggy, and then this started. It's a girl and a guy. They literally talk to me in clear as day, loud English. They tell me what I'm thinking. It's scary. They go in waves of semi-nice to mostly horrible ah. with death threats, taunting, mm. play real music back to me. This is the devil. <laughs> yeah, he's going to see you. Double this is not what we're talking about. <laughs> he's going to speak about six his parents and see what what mm -hmm. they've done because that ain't it man oh my god that's demon possession man the rude way but which is no other way to say it i still don't know what this voice to skull thing is but never mind could See, that be, i don't know what that is could that be like adhd thing that you was kind of talking about yesterday bro with like super extreme though exacerbated what with people those two distinct yeah. voices and playing music mm -hmm. i don't know with that adhd people suffer from that no obviously not the regular adhds but the the extreme ones. You remember yesterday you, you were saying that Jordan has multiple voices, right? When there is a conversation. Okay. 
and he plays out the conversation. It's not that it just invades his mind. Mm. For example, if <clears throat> he is thinking about, all right, I'm going to go to Brent's studio and I'm going to show him um, the latest album. I wonder what he would think of it. Then he would have my voice mm -hmm. now. Oh, hi, Jordan. Da -da 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 -da. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a wonderful world up there, man. Um, Do you know what, though? Mm. Did you express yourself a lot as a kid? Like, could you say how you felt a lot? Because I'm thinking maybe those of us who can think in our heads. So, an adult upbringing, right? If my parents pissed me off, I couldn't express that. I have to th think about it in my head. Maybe that's why I'm hearing things. Well, not hearing things. I'm not hearing things in Jesus' name. But maybe that's why like, I can speak to myself. I hear my own thoughts in my head. So things I'm not able to say out loud, a lot of is in there. Because I internalize a like. I internalized a lot of stuff and I wasn't really someone that shared a lot. The stuff that I guess I should really say, but I never really say it's, the conversations happen more in my head than they do verbally. So maybe that's why. You're an expressive man, to be fair. Sorry, are you trying to distance yourself from my experience because it, we just acknowledge that both of us do the same thing? No, we didn't acknowledge that. You might acknowledge that. So you're still thinking that we hear things differently. I think so. So there is a voice in your head. My voice. An audible voice. I'm here in my head, yes. I am in but my head. Not like Jordan. Not like Jordan. Then I need to understand what that in between. You know what, let's let's do it like this. Does, does, would your voice ever have a raspy voice in your head? Why would would his voice ever changed? No, because change? my voice, my in, my person doesn't change. It does. My actual voice doesn't change. When does it change? When you get sick, yeah. and when you're feeling low, or when you're excited. Have you guys ever heard me sick? If you just woke up. How would you know? <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, the voice sounds what my reality is. So if I am ill and I sound, I don't know, however I sound, mm -hmm. my voice in my head is going to sound like that because it's me. Okay, so... So it's, it mirrors my real life. It's just things that I don't want to say out loud, I can think in my head. Just don't look at me like I'm some <laughs> science experiment. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe that's, I don't know, maybe that's why. But I do, I do, I do internalize a lot of stuff. Well, not so much anymore, really, but... For long, I guess the formative years of my life, I did. So maybe that's why I hear those, like I hear myself think. Uh, because that's why I said, I don't think we're talking about the same thing because you would just say you hear yourself think. Huh? Because I just think you would have just described it as you hear yourself think. That's the easiest way to describe it. So I, so I don't think we're talking about the same thing. See what she just described? Yeah. Where she said that there's like a file cabinet and you can just mentally pull the thought to the forefront. Yeah. And then whew, that's what it is. It's like a, you know, the you got, you got like different compartments. Yeah, it's like a mind map thing. And I just do, 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 like a matrix. Do, 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 do. So when it is, I'm even looking to problem solve something. Mm -hmm. Like a, a lot of times I wake up in the morning and I'll just stay up or close my eyes and then go inside myself. And you see, yeah, you're pulling start, things. Yeah, yeah. If this goes here, then... Mm, 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 mm. Sometimes, and it needs to be isolation, like no sound, because it would disrupt the formula, the process. Yeah, our brains work differently. Yeah. Um, Ruby Tuesday says... Um, Wednesday. It's Tuesday today. It's Thursday today. Oh, is, are you giving her a different day of the week? I'm not giving her. That's what her name is. Well, it's Ruby Tuesday Ruby, up there. Ruby Wednesday. I oh, remembered right. her when she was Ruby Wednesday. Okay. She's well. trying to trick us like the other lady that likes white guys. Yeah. She's not gonna excuse like that, you know. There's like ten different names she got. <laughs> What's her name? Is the one that sleeps with a dog? Yes, the dog sleeper. <laughs> her liking white guys oh is not goodness. a damn thing. She doesn't her sleep, sleep with a dog. She, actually, the, the dog sleeps in bed with that's her. That's the one. Yeah. Use that one. Yes, yeah, so use my, that line. That's Nigerian English. When I said sleep with a <laughs> when I said sleep with a, I didn't mean having what? sex. I meant like the dog is in the bed with me. That's what I You're sleeping with your dog. The same thing. So it doesn't mean you're actually having, you know, oh coitus. My, my bad. Sorry, girl. Oh but yeah, the woman goodness. whose dog sleeps in her bed. Is she Nigerian too? She heard oh, it. No, she no. heard it in the right way too. Yeah, but you know, sometimes... <laughs> I have to question people's um, Nigerian-ness. <laughs> and they have cats. <laughs> and and the dogs, dogs. sleeping in the bed. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's somebody tricky. shared um, the new Bond, James Bond, in the Discord, right? Why do we do that? Whenever someone says Bond, they're like, James Bond. Mm. 
<laughs> or is it just a given that it's James? No, because even when he introduces, it's like I'm I'm Bond, James, James Bond. Bond. Anyway, yeah. sorry. Um, and I'm there thinking, ah, this doesn't look like a a Bond for me, right? Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, I keep scrolling down, and I see this <laughs> young lady. Oh, God, cool, love him. He's fucking awesome. <laughs> I love him. What, the yeah. dog sleeper lady? <laughs> what, the dog sleeper or Ruby Tuesday? That's the one. The dog sleeper? Not Ruby Wednesday. Okay. No, no, no. no. It's, oh, it's, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's I'm, I'm not surprised. She's like, she's like, oh, come on. That's a bit of me, though. <laughs> not, not surprised. <laughs> but that's fair. That's all right. That's I mean, that's fair. The dog sleeper is what shocked me. So, what's her name? There is. Guy Fawkes. I mean, <laughs> she told you <laughs> not to use that name. I forgot. It's, it's, that's your Abby, wicked. My inner voice came out. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Abby. Is it? Hmm? I used to get her, Abby, Maggie. There's, there's a couple, I think three girls I used to get confused yeah. at one point. What's her name then? Saka's big sis. Uh, I know. I know her name. That's Saka's big sis. Yeah. Yeah. Just rebranding yeah, yeah. every, like every time. <laughs> <laughs> She's like got oh, five man. tabs. No, honestly, I'm nah. telling you, that's so funny, man. That one's dead. Mm. Yeah. And I don't know why Emmanuel thinks it's a uh, mental health condition. Yeah, yeah, no, it's not mental health condition. It's just a learned disability. ADHD. Yeah. I don't think Actually, so. Actually, no, it's not to do with learning, is it? I don't know what it is, but it's not it like behavior. Huh? Isn't it more so behavior? I thought so. I don't know. Honestly. It's to do with attention. Yeah. Why can't you pay attention? Because they can't, they're new diverse. Because they're mental. This, I mean, are like, you dumb oh, in Lord. a good way, though. Are you right? dumb? Ain't it in a good I'm not talking about it in I hope it is that you guys have seen him in 4K, you know. Just trigger one. Man <laughs> said, are you mental? <laughs> what? I, did I say, are you mental? You what said you, worse. What did you, you say? <laughs> <laughs> you actually, you actually said. Worse. Did I not say something like they are in the mental? Isn't it mental? It's in. No, are you mental? The Lord is good. My mango is sweet this morning. Let's get into the headlines. God damn. <laughs> Gosh. All right, people. First headline. A group of former defence and security experts have warned that the British Army must prepare genuinely for war to deter threats. So the new Bletchley network said that the shrinking of army reserves in recent years caused the force to dip below national critical mass. The warning comes as questions of conscription to deter threats from Russia were raised earlier this year. The report said that British army credibility has been weakened by 20 plus years of hollowing out, hollowing out and diminishing um, fighting power. Army- <clears throat> army morale is fragile. He also said that a serious wake-up signal was given by a, se- a senior figure in NATO who warned that the British Army is no longer a tier one. Last January, a US general said that the British Army was no longer able to protect the UK, sparking further concerns of protection if war with Russia was to break out. Next headline, and peers have inflicted um, a further series of defeats of Rishi Sunak's flagship uh, small boats bill, which would see asylum seekers deported to Rwanda. The House of Lords voted on Wednesday night that the government's bill should be due, should have due regard, pardon me, for international law and that the UK's treaty with Rwanda should be fully implemented before flights start. Peers defeated the government on all seven votes, including passing an amendment that would exempt Afghan heroes who supported British troops from the from deportation to Rwanda. Labour's Lord Vernon Coker um, told peers that the reputation of the country was at stake, stressing that it can't be right that the fundamental bill exempts ministers from following international law. Lord Coker also berated the Tory peers for failing to update the House about when the bill would return to the Lords for further debate, with peers now believing it will not return until after Easter. This delay will push back the dates that flights will inevitably be able to take off to Rwanda. And our last headline, um, it's been revealed that more than 8,000 complaints have been made about the BBC's coverage of the Gaza war since Hamas attacked Israel in October. Concerns were raised about the perception of bias in the corporation's reporting of the conflict, which has seen tens of thousands of Palestinians killed as top BBC staff faced questions from the Culture, Media and Sports Committee on Wednesday. To the broadcaster's director of editorial policy and standards, David Jordan, 
told the committee of MPs, as of this morning, we had just under 4,000 people complaining that our output rather than our coverage was biased against Israel and over 4,000 that was biased in favor of Israel. Mr. Davey also uh, was asked about the BBC's reporting of a submission to the ICJ, the International Court of Justice by South Africa, alleging that Israel breached the Genocide Convention with its military offensive against Hamas. Mr. Jordan told the committee that, that South Africa and Israel's submissions receiving different amounts of coverage on different days only happened on our UK output due to the need to cover a hearing about the post office scandal. He also said that when news looked at, pardon me, when news is looked at, um, in retrospect, they did think that perhaps um, they did make a mistake by not making the two live coverages similar or the same, but all the other coverage was similar or the same. This is what he said. And that's it for the headlines. All right, well, Ruby so, Tuesday. Ruby Wednesday is going to be calling in. We're going to hear her voice. <laughs> Emmanuel, you have to promise not to be stupid. What happened now? She's going to call in and talk about ADHD. I thought we were on the same side, man. No, no, on that side. No one's on that side. You're on an island. Oh, man. Call cool up and educate me, please, man. I want to learn. What so annoying. My friend. I'm, I'm being serious. No, right, get into what you're saying. <laughs> please. I've got oh, to do man. this. <laughs> All right, so today's topic of the day. The number is at the top of the screen and also the Discord. So whichever one you want to use, let's have it. We'll be waiting. Mm -hmm. Remember that guy that was like, let's fucking have it? Let's fucking <laughs> <laughs> have it. <laughs> uh, I can't explain what that video, like how it makes me feel. It's just, it's a weird feeling because I'm disgusted, but I love it as well. Uh, big up him there, whoever he is. All right, so this topic of the day, I didn't want Marks to be here for this one as well, right? but we're going to do it. Huh? You, you, you forget Marks oh, no, not no, going to no, be no. here? I knew, I knew, I knew. Because I saw it and I thought, this is the person you need. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I in it? Do you know the thing is, like, I, I feel like there, there could be a part two to this, but only because there's so many different angles and the implications of this particular idea and, and mm. whatnot. Um, so yeah, it's not we, we won't necessarily approach it in, in the way it may seem, based on, a, on the title, but based on what this person's saying. Mm. And the implications that we can address it or we'll speak about it in other ways another time. But Brent, if you don't mind, play the video in the dot, please. We're still waiting for you, Ruby Wednesday. And we will intermittently keep saying it. Hold on. I didn't even know, I didn't know that was a topic of the day. I was thinking about, about streets. You serious? Mm. What dock were you in? I don't know. My bad. Crap. <laughs> okay, let's That's get into it. What you said. Excuse me? That's why I said what I said. Oh. I was like, why am I in it? I mean, why am I still in this? But anyway. Fair enough. Yes. All right. All right. My type. Who? Don't worry. Okay. Who's that? What is it? And what's the big deal about losing it? Let me cut to the chase. Virginity is a completely made up concept. It's a term that was created simply to control and shame people, mainly women. Mm. A virgin is someone who's never had sex, but it's not as simple as it seems. For one thing, medically, virginity isn't a real thing. In some cultures, people place a lot of importance on the hymen, a thin, fleshy tissue located at the opening of your vagina as a marker of virginity. But the status of your hymen doesn't actually mean anything. That's because having penis and vagina sex is not the only way a hymen can stretch open. It can happen by putting something in your vagina like a tampon or a finger, riding a bike, or doing sports. So you can't tell if someone's had sex by the way their hymen looks or feels. Another reason the idea of virginity is complete nonsense is that sex means different things to different people. Generally speaking, society tends to define sex in a very narrow way, penetration, penis into vagina. But where does that definition leave queer people or folks who can't or don't have penis and vagina sex and choose to have oral, anal, or another type of sex instead? And not everyone's first sexual experience is consensual, meaning that they were forced or pressured into having sex. There is also a double standard on who carries the burden of virginity. 
Society puts pressure on men for not having sex at the exact same time they shame women for having it. Make it make sense. Either way, shame has no place in someone's personal decisions about sex. It's time to throw away the notion of losing your virginity. What if instead of losing something, we reframe it as gaining? Because the truth is, when we make our own decision to become sexually active, we aren't setting ourselves up to lose anything at all. We hope we are gaining things like intimacy, self-insight, pleasure, and empowerment. All of these myths around sex and virginity can be so hurtful and overwhelming. But here's the one truth you should remember. Sex is defined by one thing and one thing only, you. Maybe that's being fingered for the first time. Maybe it's having anal sex. Maybe it's having your first orgasm. Maybe it's masturbating for the first time or when you enthusiastically consent to sex. That's the beauty of your sexual journey. You're in charge and you can figure it out on your own terms. Choosing to have sex, when, what kind, where, who with, is something that only you get to define. All right. Um, Ruby Wednesday, call again, please. Thank you very much. No, she just called you, so. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Why are you kissing your teeth? This guy. Anyway, um, obviously, there's a lot of information in the video, yeah. But what, are your, what were your thoughts on this, guys? Um, I agree with some of it. Um, I say some because after a while, it's kind of lost me. But I agree, I agree with the whole um, losing your virginity and someone taking your virginity situation. I feel like that language is a bit wild. I agree as well that society punishes women for having sex, but then praises men for having punishes women for yeah for having sex, but praises men for having sex. But then who would the, but then would clown men for not having sex? But who would the men have sex with? It's just it's all weird. Um, and yeah, that is true. Your hymen is not a sign of being a virgin because it can break in other ways. Essentially, um, what else is there that I agree with? Yeah. Because if you, I, I feel like for me that I, I define virginity as different. I think it's more about sexual innocence. So mm. if you're getting fingered up and down the streets, and I just feel like can't, just yeah, thing. yeah, <laughs> just virgin, the innocence is gone, love, it's gone. Mm. Um, but yeah, but you always hear more about virginity when it comes to women anyway than you do hear about guys being virgins. And the guys that are virgins, there's forty year old virgin clowning them. There's uh, that film. There's stuff clowning them for being virgins. So. But then women up. I don't know. I just think the whole thing is just silly to yeah. me. Okay, okay. Then what's your what's your thoughts on this when you first when you heard it? I want to hear Ruby Wednesday's thoughts first. Okay. <laughs> you calling her back? <laughs> no, she's a, she's um teacher man. But she called. Yeah, and then you missed opportunity, so now she's got students in the class. It's not that I missed it. It, it rang a couple of times and then it came off. So because she's like, when I bring, you should pick up. Maybe a child called her. I don't know. Need maybe. to call back. Maybe. Um. Sure, what well, her saying that there's no such thing as virginity, yeah, but plus everything, everything, so there's a lot of be. stuff that she said, man. Yeah, so what, what are some of your thoughts on whatever you want to talk about? Did she um, lose you too. What Did she lose you as well? Here we go. Stop kissing your teeth, man. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, hello, morning, girl. Good morning, how are you? Hi, Good morning, Ruby. I'm okay, like how are you guys? Good, thank you. Good morning, Iman. <laughs> um, I don't know if you guys can hear me because yeah, my can. signal is really bad. Oh, okay. Hi. Um, I don't really know what to say. Um, apart from I know that ADHD gets a really bad rep, mm -hmm. and I'm not, I'm not gonna sit here and defend it. Um, I'm not the represent. I can't even say the word. Um, Sensitive. I just woke up, guys. By the yeah, rep. Well, the that word. <laughs> Um, but basically, Iman, it's not a mental health issue, problem. Mm. It's just the way that your brain works. So mm. you kind of have to think about it as it's a differently wired brain that lacks dopamine. And okay. dopamine obviously is very important. Um, so... If you lack a lot of dopamine, then you're going to be off. So you're more likely to be inattentive. You're more likely to have 
all different problems because we need dopamine every day. So you seek dopamine. Mm. So a lot of the time with, um, a lot of people have ADHD and they don't know about it. So a lot of the people who are ga- who, gambling, you can have a lot of gambling problems. You can have a lot of drug problems. So many things, problems in school. So, you know, like, uh, I don't know. It's, it's hard mm. to have a conversation about it when you're not an expert. Mm-hmm. And it's hard to explain it to people mm-hmm. um, because I this isn't my view of my life, but I've struggled in my life. I got I was very rare as a girl, as a woman, to be diagnosed. It's it's you find a later on in life um, more women nowadays. You're seeing like the TikTok trends of people saying, "Oh, do I have ADHD? Do I have autism?" Because women have the amazing trait to be able to mimic Mm -hmm. we mimic our peers and boys are less likely to do that boys as they're little will be like oh fuck it i am me Mm -hmm. but for girls socially it's a big thing to not be able to fit in but i didn't fit in and i also had a lot of the hyperactivity issues so why it picked up but also i'm am most probably autistic as well um but that's a whole different story but they do interlink massively um but there are a lot more people there are a lot of people in your life that if you did the research into ADHD you would look at your parents you would look at your aunties your uncles your children um and say this person has ADHD or autism Mm-hmm. And it's better to get an early diagnosis because you can have really detrimental effects if it doesn't get diagnosed early. Like I said, like drug problems, gambling, mental health problems, smoking weed, all those types of things, mm-hmm. like seeking all those, seeking dopamine, basically. So, and so it can develop into mental health problems. Or is it just that? It yeah, no, no, no. It's like, it's, it, no, 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 no. Um, it basically, I would like, I don't want to say like point blank mm-hmm. that if you have ADHD, you have mental health problems, but they do go side by side. So like anxiety, depression, and it can get worse. So, yeah. All right. So it's not a mental health problem. Stop screaming that, please, because it does get a bad rep for that. And people just think you're mad because you can't do simple things. Okay. Like I have to have a set routine every day. That might be to do with my possible autism. I have to have a set routine every single day. And if that routine gets interrupted, then I am a mess. I can't, I can't do things. Mm. And it is mad to think because it's just like, your brain is just busy. And obviously, if you have loads of things in your head going in all at once and you're getting all these different stimuli as well, because you can have sensory problems as well. You can have food issues, <clears throat> loads of different things. Mm-hmm. So it does, I can understand why people think it is a mental health problem, but it isn't. It's just a different brain. Um, do you feel like, Certain things are maybe, um, how, how do I phrase this question? Because I remember I was, I was watching Dr. Uma speak about ADHD, right? And how so many black mm-hmm. children are being diagnosed with having ADHD and they don't have mm-hmm. ADHD, they're just children, just being children, mm-hmm. right? But do you feel like some of those things that people identify as being symptoms of ADHD in children are sometimes just not dealt with? There's no discipline on that particular child. And so pot- potentially as the child grows up, becomes a, a, um, a teenager, a young adult and, and stuff like that. They just haven't learned or been taught how to, you know what I'm saying? Like behave in certain settings and stuff like that. And so it kind of is just carried on rather than actually being something that is, I guess, innate and like you just have to manage it for the rest of your life. Um, it's, uh, no, 
there's obviously I don't know parenting is like when parenting gets involved in it it's, it's quite a tricky conversation yeah. um there's obviously a right way to I, don't, I can't even say that um I don't know it's, it's difficult there's a right way to deal with a child who has ADHD. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a baseline for just being kind of understanding and people see it as they are badly behaved, but they're experiencing a different world to what you, a neurotypical person, is experiencing. Mm-hmm. And especially there is this whole like adult and child relationship Um where you are a child, you must listen. And I don't think children are being listened to enough, especially like as I work with children myself, um, working with children when you have ADHD is mental anyway. It's a very difficult job. Um, But I love it. And I was someone who was lost in the system. I had teachers who didn't listen to me. Um, And I try my best to listen to them but obviously there are when it in terms of behavior it's more about explaining things so because people with adhd are lacking dopamine they need a lot of information so if you explain things to a child properly instead of saying just do it because i said so no i said so like you know like discipline disciplining a child in that way like i'm the adult I have final say. Mm -hmm. If you explain to them, like, this is the reason why you can't do this. And you can have two results. Something bad's going to happen. Or if you listen to me, then this is going to happen. And then we can go on to do this. It's just explaining. And obviously it doesn't always work. And sometimes they can get into massive meltdowns and have fits of rage or whatever. But... I don't know. In the community, they see a child who has autism and ADHD and they say, oh, I'm going to pray for you. Mm. Or it, that's not going to fix the problem. You can pray for the strength of the parent, but you're not going to fix that child with prayer. And it's a, it's a really messed up way to kind of think about things. Mm-hmm. Um, you need to stand behind that adult and say what can I help you with do you know what I mean like do you need a break do you want me to take your child to the park or I don't know I don't know if I answered the question because I went off there I also do yeah, that I so. no, I, yeah I, I get what you're saying I think I think the discipline argument sometimes it's like a lazy argument and it's not understanding mm-hmm. again of what the condition actually is and how it is that their brains work differently like for example, Nigerian culture, if you use your left hand, that's seen as a thing of disrespect. But then uh-huh. there's kids who like who get disciplined regularly because like you're so disrespectful, you're so disrespectful, you're so disrespectful. But all it is is they don't know how to use their right hand, they're left-handed. Uh-huh. Do you get me? So you will see that child, yeah. I'll be like, oh, they lack discipline. No, their abilities are just different. And I feel like it's the same thing yeah. with ADHD where I don't think it can, it, it's, it can be, I don't think that conversation can just be brought, reduced to just... Mm. a discipline issue because again they learn differently like I've heard mm-hmm. people who, who have ADHD speak about how sometimes it's just it's just someone understanding that like, you know what actually this child doesn't learn the way other kids learn and then you fine tune the way that child yeah. learns and then now the child is excelling because again they don't learn like everyone learns yeah. differently and I feel like with ADHD essentially that's kind of what it is so some kids will learn better with lectures mm. some people will learn better we're able to mm-hmm. retain information with videos some people you rather like draw things out mm-hmm. have some colorful pens or whatever it's just a different yeah, way of 100%. learning so i don't think it comes down to the discipline i feel like the discipline is like the old school way of thinking in mm. terms of people having like mental mm-hmm. health illnesses or adhd or um mm-hmm. even autism like just different things that are not quote unquote the norm and then we kind of class that as oh they lack they lack discipline kind of things. So, I don't know. I don't think it's a necessarily a discipline thing because you've got children who don't have ADHD who lack discipline, and that's clear as heck. Clear Wait, as the, heck. The, yeah, one hundred percent. Does it sound like I'm saying it is? Because uh, a couple of people in the chat are making comments, and uh, yours said something. And I that. responded, and so um, it's, uh, maybe Wednesday, Tuesday. No, so. because it's, I'm not saying it because <laughs> I'm I'm basically saying 
You remember, like, no, it's it, it's your, just your stance of it, like, oh, it's a mental health problem, oh, they're mental. Do you know what I mean? It's that kind of like, it's that same dismissive, um, kind of, I would say, borderline ignorant view on people being different. Mm. And there's obviously going to be people, they say one in 20 people have ADHD. They say one in 40 have autism, but those numbers are changing, right? Mm -hmm. Um, There are going to be people in the community who are neurodivergent and they might want to reach out and they might want to say something, but it's just being a bit more inclusive and careful with your language because if you don't know something you shouldn't really talk on something mm. do you know what I mean I mean everything that you're saying like do your research before you mm. before you start making wild claims like oh you're mental and the whole thing of like not every single person is the same so that means not every single person with ADHD has the same signs or symptoms like you guys were talking about Jordan and his friend yesterday um mm with the whole inner voice thing. Not it's not an ADHD thing. Like I know Brent was like joking with that. Um <laughs> but it's do you know what I mean? Like just be a bit careful with how I mean, you approach I, I, conversation. I I get what you're saying, but I, I think maybe it's because Man, again, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's not like this. But if I put this down to being Nigerian, in it, <laughs> but um, I, I guess I'm I'm kind of flippant with how, what I call or deem something to be mental health in it. I just see it as anything to do with the, the brain that is, I guess, not seen as conventional. So it's not me saying it's a it's a, it's a problem. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Or 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 kind of saying it's a sickness or in, in that sense. It's just me. This is why I said. Isn't it like mental? Like it's in the head. Like you know what I'm saying. Not necessarily that it's a bad thing and that you're gonna die from it, or in the same sort of connotation that you put mm-hmm. to something like depression. So I, I don't want to misunderstand what I'm saying there. But also, when I ask the question about relating it to discipline, it's not me saying, "Oh, I think it's a discipline thing." It's me asking. No, 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 no. no, no, I'm no, not, no not, that. not you. Not you. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Only because I'm seeing certain things in the chat as well. And this is why I, w- I want to make sure I'm not being misunderstood. Um, but it's me saying, I've seen Dr. Uma, who is a trained psychologist so he has a, a, a valued and professional yeah, but can opinion. i just yeah but he's biased can i though. just say no, he doesn't like black people sorry, exactly. i'm so sorry Ruby, but he doesn't like black people having any bad things so he's biased and he's not going to enter that conversation the way a psychologist by oath should actually enter that conversation he's biased he's biased by his entire existence no, but mm-hmm. that, that's, that's not fair to say that it's very like, fair it's very sorry I, Ruby, but you speak. can't sorry, you also you can't also just go off one quote unquote trained psychologist because at the end of the day, like I just said, like we're all individuals. We are like, he is going to be influenced by the person that he is, his views, his morals, just because he says so doesn't mean it's underlying cut. That's it. That's what ADHD is. Mm. Black people don't have ADHD. You can't say, you can't see that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but you, we, Dr. Uma never said that. I, I'm simply just saying, because I, okay, I, again, I, I don't want it to look like I'm putting something on Dr. Uma that, that he didn't say. I'm, all mm-hmm. I'm simply saying is, right, that he's seen in schools, especially in America, right? Well, obviously, that's the only place he, he practices, right? Where um, people are, are, are misdiagnosing black children and kind of messing up their futures, right? Because of the, the how they deal with them going forward by calling them uh, people who have who have ADHD, right? instead of recognizing that sometimes some of these kids just don't have, are just behaving like children, you know what I'm saying? And give them time mm-hmm. to, to grow up, to, to learn, to develop, like children should be afforded. And you'll see that they kind of grow out of certain things. Again, he's not saying this for people who have legit ADHD. He's saying some mm-hmm. people are being misdiagnosed. And so yeah, I'm so asking, some people are misdiagnosed. This is it. That's he what is right. Saying. Exactly, that's what he is saying. right. Exactly. But... Yeah, you should have said that the first time because you were not. I don't. I, I said he, the, the people, no. he said people are being misdiagnosed. <laughs> you didn't say. You didn't explain it the way you said it this time because the way you sounded, you were not doing that yeah, you did, um, favor. The, no, I, 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 you uh, did uh, you know, it. You did it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Exactly. You've said the point now. It's exactly. Fine. And all I'm trying to basically say is, for those people who are being misdiagnosed, right? Could it be? Because mm. remember, the diagnosis is still there, but it's misdiagnosed. Mm-hmm. Could it be that? Some but can of those I just say there is a massive. There is a massive thing, right, 
mm-hmm. especially even in the UK at the moment. So I've got an ADHD diagnosis mm-hmm. and I'm sh- I'm struggling at the moment and I've asked for help. I asked for help in 2020 from my GP and I said, um, I want to speak to somebody um, just to help me manage a little bit better and just, yeah, whatever. They were like, okay, cool. So my referral went in. I have only just got confirmation that my referral is being processed. So four years later, Mm. and on that referral letter, it says the wait time is four years on top. So in total, I'm going to be waiting eight years to get help, even though I am a person who's already got a diagnosis. Mm. That is the state of the NHS at the moment. Then you've got to think about all the people who are like, oh, I've been struggling. I think I have ADHD. Same thing. So the wait list goes up and up and up. Then people are like, oh, fuck it. I can't. Sorry. I'm sorry in the morning. I can't um, cope at the moment. I'm going to go private. So people get private healthcare. They get a diagnosis saying that they've got ADHD, even though they might not have ADHD. Then they're put on medication and they get money. They make mm-hmm. money out of that prescription. Yep. And you've got to remember, America is already privatized in that way. So they are going to be making money off all those people in America mm-hmm. who don't really have ADHD. So it's a money-making thing at the same time. So mm-hmm. you have to see it from that viewpoint. Precisely. Exactly. This is why so it is a scam. The system is a scam. Mm. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. But yeah, anyways. Thank you very much for calling up, man. Thanks, Ruby. Thank you, Ruby Wednesday. Yeah, I hope I'm not being cooked in the chat, but yeah. No, no. Anyways, all, thank you. See you later, girl. <laughs> Bye, guys. Have a good Bye. day. What is it? Is it? Who said it? Someone said... Um, where is it? Some something about Doctor Uma says something about absent daddy home. Mm. Something else. Yeah, that's the expert you're listening to. Wonderful. Yeah, SLM eighty six said ADHD absent daddy home disorder, according <laughs> to Doctor Uma. I don't know if Doctor Uma has actually said that. Yeah, I, I think obviously I've not heard it like that, but I'm I'm pretty sure I've heard Doctor Uma basically make that correlation between. Where there's no fathers in the house, there's children who lack discipline. And that's a, that's a, that's a fact. Because the dad is the one who typically lays down the law and makes sure that certain things is, is, is you know, carried out. Do you have another call? Hello. Tomani was going to call in. Morning, Tomani. Morning. Morning. Morning, hon. How are you? Am I live? You're live. Oh, we're here. Hi. Wait, let me, let me turn off my TV. Because otherwise it's going to... Are we live? There we go. We're live, honey. We're live. Um... I'm just going to explain the ADHD situation as well, just because I do this. This is my bread and butter right now. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, (laughs) Not in a good way. Don't do the horns. As in, like, we are just seeing an influx of, like, referrals and the amount of assessments I have to do. I do one a week. Like, I literally did one two days ago. Um, And, yeah, it's quite dire out there in terms of waiting times. There's, like, a global shortage of medication as well. So... We can't even start anyone new on medication either. So people are really suffering, I can't lie. But in terms of me explaining the like how it kind of works is, so if you think about the brain, yeah, there's two parts to it. So there's like the primitive part of it, which is like your emotions, um, your sex drive, your hunger, etc. And then on top of it is the bit that you normally see in pictures. Yeah, that's the um, executive functioning part. I'll just call it that for now. And when we talk about executive functioning, we're talking about things like being able to organize yourself, plan, stop your impulses, um, pay attention and concentrate. Now, some people, that part of the brain isn't wired quite like you would expect it to be or that would fit society, essentially. I should say it like that, actually. So they will have more difficulties concentrating. um, They'll be a bit more hyperactive. They'll be impulsive as well. And that's what we would fit as ADHD. So people who have those kind of difficulties. So it is about how the brain is wired. It's not mental health difficulty. It's not a learning disability. It is what we call a neurodevelopmental condition. So again, when we speak about neurodevelopmental, we're talking about how your brain develops. So that's essentially what 
ADHD is. So does, does that make so, sense? So when you say it's how your brain develops, there is no deficiency. It's just that it develops differently. Yeah, it's just different. It's just different. That's it. Like it's just not firing in the way that it would fire if you didn't have those difficulties, essentially. Mm. So there's no, the reason that you're more likely to have a mental health condition or difficulty is because imagine now you're a kid who really can't sit still. still. You now go to school and you're expected to do that. Stress. They can't do it. So they're going to be stressed out. Um, they might come with anxiety because you can't perform well at exams or you can't do well at work or whatever it is. It's not that they have a deficiency. It's just that the way their brain works doesn't really fit in terms of the expectations that are placed on them in school, in the workplace, in family, etc. So then that comes with its own sense of difficulty as well. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Can, can I ask you, how do you define mental health or mental health issues? How do we define... Yeah, so any diagnosis, right? So we all experience everything, right? We all experience everything, even down to like psychosis, right? Yeah, yeah. We all, it's very common to hear a voice like that's not quite there or see something that's not quite there. That happens sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. The difficulty is when you diagnose someone, it means it's impacting them to an extent which affects their daily life, what we call adaptive functioning. So if you can't, if you have a level of anxiety, which means you can't leave your house, it's now a disorder, Mm -hmm. everyone has anxiety everyone gets low everyone gets sad um people sometimes hear things that all happens it's all in the scope of human experience when it affects your day-to-day -day living your relationships work etc cetera, etc cetera, now it's a disorder okay does that make sense okay so all right cool i i don't want to go down a particular road where it just seems like i'm you know, I don't, I don't want to seem like I'm being silly in it. But you can ask I, I, I do want to ask you. you know, yeah, well, definitely. Mm. <laughs> but, but like, are, are there people with ADHD so extreme that they can't leave their homes? Um, they are very hard to manage. Mm -hmm. In like, so, like, children, like, they, they, their parents can't manage them. You, if, let's say, think about it. If your child is super hyperactive, kids are anyway, right? Yeah. Full stop. But to the extent where you constantly have to keep an eye on them, they might run into the road, jump off this thing, break an ankle, do like you are going to be a bit more cautious about taking them out. So it could be that they don't go out as much. Okay. And it would be more to do with anxiety than it would be the actual condition itself. So not being able to manage the condition. Okay. So the person with the condition wouldn't necessarily um, make that decision unless they thought, you know what? Mm. Last yeah. time this happened, I mean, like, so I don't want to go out and risk yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, basically. So, but that would be a, like a what we call secondary difficulty. Mm -hmm. So the anxiety linked to the actual mm -hmm. root cause. So the anxiety would be stopping you from going out, not that. Mm. Okay. Okay, I hear you. So just, just I want to shout out to Ruby because I think she did well explaining, and yeah. like obviously it's good to hear. I'm just telling you what I read in books and what I see every day and what I have to do. But, like, she actually lives with it. Do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's good to hear from her. Okay, cool. I hear you. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, Ruby, thank you, girl. That's is Dr. Marley. All right, cool. Big up, Dr. Marley. Appreciate uh, you. Appreciate Brenda doesn't like being a girl because you're Dr. Amani. <laughs> Dr. Amani. It shows oh, respect, honey. She's not dying. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank Thanks. you, Bye. 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 Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. So let's get into our next headlines. Let's mm -hmm. do it. Crazy, you guys. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. So our next headline. And Ireland's Prime Minister, Leo Varadkar, says that he's stepping down as the leader of the governing Fine Gael Party. In a surprise announcement on Wednesday, Varadkar said that he would also relinquish his role as Prime Minister as soon as the successor is chosen. So he was speaking to reporters in Dublin and he said, I'm resigning the presidency and leadership of the Fine Gael and will resign as prime minister as soon as my successor is able to take up that office. He said that he has asked for a new leader of the party to be chosen on April 6th, allowing a new prime minister to be elected after um, Parliament's Easter break. Varadka is 45, so that it was the right time for him to step aside. Um, he said without elaborating that my, pro my 
no problem, sorry. My reasons for stepping down now are personal and political, but mainly political. You also added that I have nothing else lined up. I have nothing in mind. I have no definite personal or political plans. Ben, what do you think of that, man? Do you think they've got something on him? What? Do you think they've got something on him? You're not listening? I'm no, I was doing something. Okay, cool. So who's this island's prime minister? Yeah, he, he just stepped down. Is that the black guy? No, 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 that's Welsh. Oh no, no. Yeah, he, he just um he just stepped down. He said, <laughs> "I've got no nothing I'm doing after this." Uh, it's, it's, he said it's personal reasons and political, but mainly political. Yeah, somebody whispered in there. Mm. Well, our next headline and two trigger warning, guys. Two seven police officers and a former officer are facing gross misconduct proceedings over the alleged sharing of offensive WhatsApps. So derogatory and inappropriate messages were found on the phone of a deceased former officer, Ricky Jones, who spent 26 years with Gwent Police. His widow and daughter said that they have suffered years of coercive control by him, but felt unable to report it to police due to his links to the force. His daughter, Emma, that's not her real name, said one of the messages sent between Jones and other officers showed a picture of Grenfell Tower alongside the quote, the great Muslim bake-off. Can you imagine? The IOPC probe looked into the conduct of seven serving and four former officers. Its investigation concluded last October and the watchdog has found that two serving constables and a former constable have a gross misconduct case to answer. He said that they exchanged messages which were of a racist, misogynistic and homophobic nature. The gross misconduct hearings will be arranged by the police but yeah, for later in the year. And our last headline... Um, the Independent Inclusion at Work panel, which is appointed by the Business Secretary, Kemi Badenoch, spoke to more than 100 people in 55 organizations and reviewed the latest research into how employers make decisions about diversity and inclusion policies and practices in the UK. So in a report that was published yesterday on Wednesday, the panel said that many employers want to do the right thing, but are introducing measures without the support of evidence. It said that some of those they spoke to cited examples of what good practices might look like, but a collection of robust data was rare and measurable impact was scarce. Um, the report also noted that the evidence suggested that many organizations, DNI, um, diversity and inclusion approaches are driven by pre-existing notions, assumptions and pressures rather than empirical evidence. Ms. Badenock said that dis discussions around diversity and inclusion at work are often bogged down by performative gestures. This report by the Inclusion at Work panel is a powerful new tool for organizations. She also went on to say that I sincerely hope that businesses will take time to read this report so that it becomes an important step in helping them achieve more inclusive and productive workplaces. And that's it for the headlines. Time to pay them bills. All right, let's get into some word on road. All right, what are we talking about today? We've got quite a few things to go through. Oh, sad news. Um, Chris Jenner, um, who is, of course, the momager that everyone knows and loves, um, Kim Kardashian's mum. The Kardashian's mum, essentially, she paid tribute to her sister who sadly passed away. Mm. And she posted saying, they were twins as well, you know. They look exactly alike. She says, it is with the heaviest heart and deepest sadness that I share that my sister Karen passed away yesterday unexpectedly. My heart my heart aches for my mum, MJ, and my niece, Natalie. And I pray that God guides us all through this difficult time. Karen was beautiful inside and out. She was the sweetest, kindest, the most sensitive and vulnerable and so, so funny. She always felt grateful and thankful for, for her life and treasured her family and friends and especially her beautiful daughter. She holds, she holds such a huge part of my heart and I cherish every single memory we have together. Karen's passing is a reminder that life is so short and precious and tomorrow is never promised. Word. Mm. Very big word. We must tell those we cherish how much we love them. I love you, my beautiful sister. Yeah, man. Um, and then also, oh, Karen Huger. So Karen Huger, she is a uh, real house of Potomac. Um, Which one is like, that one? She's one with, she's at Tina Knowles. You want to say Beyonce's mom? Mm. Yeah, her. She's like her. She looks like her. Oh, is it? Yeah, that's what people always say. <laughs> she actually probably looks like, Brandy, if, if you don't mind, please. What are you doing confetti for? MLD has welcomed his new baby girl. Oh. Congrats, congrats. Congratulations, hon. Is that your first? Let us know. Congrats, man. God bless her life. Amen, amen. Um, please, do you mind putting up a picture of Karen Hugo so people can see that she actually does look like um, 
in her nose. But no, so she refers to herself as the grand dam because she's like the she's like the godmother of the group kind of thing. She's been there for years, da da da, in longest marriage, all that great stuff. Cut long story short, she's had a car crash and she's been charged with DUI. Very disappointing. Very disappointing. And the girls are gonna cook her in the next season. Gonna cook her in the next season. But apparently that's what's going on. She's so she's facing charges of negligently driving a vehicle in a careless and imprudent manner, endangering property, life, and person, as well as recklessly driving in a vehicle in wanton and willful disregard for the safety of person and property. But yeah, apparently she might have been um, intoxicated. So that will be an interesting um, conversation to have. But she looks really good. She's, she's a vibe. She's a, she's a good vibe on the show, to be fair. Um, Jonathan Majors is being sued by his ex, Grace Jabari for defamation of character, assault, and battery. So this is this is actually a civil lawsuit as opposed to the other one that he went through, which was a criminal, and which she was a witness in. Because the state, I think this, I believe the state were the one who's going to, you know, court and whatnot. But anyway, because it was a criminal situation. But yeah, so this is now a civil lawsuit. And um, yeah, so she's basically saying that he's consistently engaged, sorry, trigger warning, trigger warning, trigger warning, um, domestic violence. So um, the lawsuit is saying that he has consistently engaged in an escalating pattern of abusive behavior towards women since as early as 2013. Um, also, the document says, when publicly confronted with Grace's numerous allegations of abuse, Majors has called her a liar at every turn and very specifically claimed that he has never put, hands, put his hands on a woman with the goal of convincing the world that Grace is not a victim of domestic abuse but instead a crazy liar who should be treated as such. Um, and then her lawyer went on to say that it takes true bravery to hold someone with this level of power and acclaim accountable. What power does Jonathan Majors have these days? Um, she goes on to say, bravery that Grace Jabari has demonstrated at every stage of the legal process. Um, we strongly believe that through this action, truth and transparency will bring Grace to justice that she deserves. I will keep an eye on that. His sentencing is actually the 8th of... April, so he will know whether he's in community service or if he's going, he's been banged up, banged up. So I will keep you updated on all of that stuff. Also, Ray J was on a breakfast club. I haven't finished watching the interview actually. Actually, yeah, there's reason why. But anyway, um, so he was on there before that. Monica, basically, quite a long story. Show. This story is about Monica telling Ray J to keep her name out of his freaking mouth because she's had enough. Always bring Monica and Brandy up every chance he gets. She's just over it. But he's just trying to make money. Ray J is such a businessman, yeah. He's such a hustler that it's it's just like, oh, calm down. So the other day, Monica was on Instagram Live. Ray J was up in the comments, spamming the comments, and she didn't pay no attention to him. He was like, Brandy Monica tour, please let's make history. One run for the fans, 100 million plus for both of you. Where's the 100 million coming from? Because I know it's heck, you, you're not about to charge me $200 or 200 pounds, sorry. Mm -hmm. Where's the 100 million coming from? That's 200 million, you know. He said 100 million plus for each of you. Or for both of them, maybe they're spitting it. So anyway, he was on Breakfast Club, right? And I guess the, the conversation of Monica came up again. Monica and Brandy. And basically, this man said, um, he said that he thinks that they will be, like, they're a great iconic duo. They're both really great in what they do. They should have a concert together, a joint show. Then obviously, Envy was like, yeah, but who's opening? Then he goes, well, obviously, Monica. <laughs> Imagine. I don't know, man. Anyway, Monica has now written a whole... <laughs> Our statement <laughs> tagged him, and hopefully Ray J listens because Ray J he's just a character. He's just such a he's just such a character. Such a, in between the flipping interview, he's taking breaks to do some things about oh he feels a bit hot. Oh, to be fair, I mean maybe maybe he wanted to pass out. Who knows? But he's taking off his earrings. There's a whole thing. Ray J is a character. But anyway, she said, "I've been repeatedly contacted about interviews, etc., where my name and tour possibilities are being discussed. I've not received any contracts." or calls about said tour. At Ray J, I'm kindly asking you to stop speaking on me in public. A private conversation will be both necessary and respectful. Brandy is a legend, legend in caps, she put. She's one of she's one of one with an extensive, cat extensive catalog that I deeply respect and a voice sent from heaven. The conversation being had without she and I is beginning to muddy the waters severely. She and I are both cons consummate professionals that share a massive recording as well as an entire era. Please allow this to remain positive and beautiful. I love that, man. I love that. Neither should 
Neither should open. We should give someone else that opportunity and co-headline a massive shared stage if this is to ever happen. Any further conversation should be private. Um, and then she also was in the comments. She said, just to clear the air, she said, I get it. I will forever be the bad guy in this situation and no one will ever pay attention or read, listen to understand. I have no issues with anyone, but it's not real unless there's a deal. There's no 100 mil plus, no contract, media outlets calling for comments about an imaginary tour. And this unfairly spikes the excitement of our supporters and the insinuation that the holdup of said imaginary deal taking place is me. That's mm -hmm. word, you know, mm -hmm. that's a word. Because even with the whole, um, what's that thing called? Versus thing. People, always, I feel like we've across time, people always made made it seem as though Monica is the problem, and Monica is the reason why things are moving forward, and Monica is the issue. I hear, I love that she's addressing this. She goes on to say the Breakfast Club interview is the first I've acknowledged of the antics. We both deserve the respect of real business being done. Honestly, Brandy, get your brother on a leash. He's like he's a little brother, but he just really does so much sometimes. Like he's such a fan of his sister, but gosh, golly, calm down. But anyway, I would love to see that tour. I'll be lit. I love Brandy and Monica. But anyways, um, Marcel, I talked about Marcel last week and he's alleged this track that he was a planning plan. Anyway, he posted on his Instagram. He said, the last three weeks have rocked me to the core. There's no, I can't believe people are being cheated on each other and whatnot. And this, we're doing public Instagram statements. But then again, I have nothing to report otherwise, so keep doing it. <laughs> um, Marcel says, the last three weeks have rocked me to the core. There's no right way to handle betrayal and I've experienced so many feelings since everything happened that I feel a different emotion every hour of the day. Anger, embarrassment, anxiety, depression, questioning my worth, loneliness, grief, and sometimes those feelings coupled with the noise of having the whole world know my situation. Mm, I feel that. And everyone having opinions and telling me what I should do and not do can make you, can make, you make choice in haste. The so-called diss track wasn't an attack. It was going to be my statement about the situation, but it wasn't the best way to do it. I'm going to pause it. In the preview that was shared, you're talking about having receipts. You can't say you're trying to clear the air, talking about you having, everyone knows what having, re having receipts on somebody is fighting words. That's not peaceful kumbaya, let's settle this outside of the divorce, uh, the, the divorce court. Anyways, he goes on to say, I realized this after the fact, which is why I chose to remove the snippets. I don't need to, do they live in the same house? Anyway, I don't need to explain to the world how my heart is broken. Yeah, that's sad though. Because you already know. So what I'm going to do is take some time to heal and give myself some much needed peace. 100%. I'm going to choose me because a healed, mentally strong me is the best thing I can do for Roman. He's my number one priority. That is their son. And every action I take from now will only be to maintain that peace and ensure Roman is happy. Any choices or decisions I make about me and Rebecca will be done in private and away from the circus that's been created, which I was about to feed into before I caught myself. I love that he called himself though. And he goes in to say peace and healing. And peace and healing to you, Marcel. Because it's not easy, man. I can't imagine, like, you know, your business being out there having to deal with stuff publicly. But I think he's got the right approach in terms of, you know, keeping things separately. Next, my last thing to talk about today, trigger warning. So um, please tune out. It's trigger warning on sexual assault, sexual violence, um, misogyny, um, child molestation, all that stuff is... It's horrible. So please tune out if you need to. But basically, I talked about a while ago, I um, talked about watching, well, I talked about the documentary that was upcoming by Nic about Nickelodeon. It's called Quiet On Set. And essentially, it's a lot of the child actors from like very popular Nickelodeon shows talking about the mistreatment on set, talking about the weird things that was going on on set, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I also talked about how Drake Bell would also be featured. So he was known, he is from the show Drake and Josh. Um, big superstar. Before, there was a Zac Efron. He was a Zac Efron. Not for me, but the white girls are losing the extensions of him. It's the whole thing. Zac and that. Who? Zac and Big Sis and that. Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah, girl, did you like, um, you know, Drake Bell? That's no easy type. I'm actually interested to know where her type is. But anyways. Um, yeah, so basically, th so yeah, so the, um, it was announced with the documentary that he was going to feature in it and talk about an abuse that he faced. When I tell you, it's a four-part documentary, about 45 minutes each um, each episode. It was mad. It was mad. It was uncomfortable. It was sickening. It was disgusting. It was every word you can imagine. Like, there's so much there that I don't actually have enough time to get to the bottom of. But just on the highlights of it, I guess. Oh, basically, it's so weird, yeah? 
knowing so Nickelodeon is a, is a kids channel Nickelodeon Disney Channel I grew up on those channels I watched Nickelodeon had Kinnan and Kill on there the Amanda show iCarly Zoe 101 is all shows I watched these all shows I featured in the in the documentary mm. when I tell you yeah it's so like oh you know how people okay you know there's been a whole theme with that like, talking about like how Hollywood is for adults and Hollywood is so disgusting I think it's worse for the kids I think yeah. the reason why it gets to the adult stage is because they start abusing these kids from when they're young. For one, the child labor laws is completely out of the door out of the door. They've got these kids working stupid long hours, like stupid long hours, no care whatsoever for, you know, child labor laws, no care whatsoever for maybe they might be tired or whatever. And I think I think what it is as well, so with children who watch like cartoons and watch not cartoons, but watch shows with like with humans in them. I know that sounds wild, but <laughs> TV show, like kids shows with mm. human beings, it looks fun. Mm -hmm. As a child watching Nickelodeon, as a child watching Disney Channel, it looked like a fun job to have. Gosh, to learn of the abuse these kids were facing behind closed doors was wild. Anyway, so Child Labor Laws was out of the door. They were like two of the um Giovanni, I remember. But I actually remember her from that to Raven, actually. She's Raven's cousin in, in that. And there's another black guy as well. I think there's like two other black guys actually. They talk about their experiences while being black on the on the set and whatever. They didn't feel like they were Dan Schneider's like favorites. They also felt like, and they were kids. I felt like these kids were like between like 10, 11, 12, 13 max. But they were basically talking about how, well, not max, because some of you, anyway, no, not today. Um, yeah, not max, but between those ages anyway, early teens. But basically, they were talking about how they kind of realized that like, they were aware of their race then from like such a young age that they made, they realized that just the reality of their race of like people are always going to accept you that their dad came from, from doing that. One of the guys, so sometimes they will have the parents there when they'll kind of be like, oh, the parents need to leave. Da, da, da. There's this black guy whose mom always advocated for him and advocated when she saw that things were uncomfortable, when she saw that he wasn't uncomfortable with things. Um, he got fired on account of his mom. But obviously as a kid, like he felt like, oh my gosh, my mom ruined it for me. Mm -hmm. But he's grown up and he's like, oh, she was protecting me and da da da, da. It was almost as if like, she said she, it kind of became a thing where she was like the problem person. Like, people would know she's going to bring up something. But it was, she was pointing out unfair, like mistreating of the children and whatnot. So there was that. Also, the thing with Nickelodeon as well, watching it now as, so Nickelodeon is a kid's channel, but watching it as an adult year is so much sexual stuff in there. It is mad. Mm. It's mad. So one of the black guys, he was talking about like, and obviously these kids as well, they're going from like 10, 12 into like puberty. So you, as going to puberty, you already feel weird about your body and whatever. One of the black guys was saying how one time he had to act like a fetus. It was like a rapping fetus. So rapping because he's black. And then the fetus because, well, they had him in some skin tight thing that made him like he was naked. But he was like, the thing was so tight where it's like, you can see mm -hmm. every part of his body. And he's a teen going into puberty. So he said he felt so self-conscious and whatnot. But then there he's on camera, whatever. Even actually, he's, I think his first scene, his mom said, was basically he was trying to sell sugar to some kid. But guess where? Then the corner of the street, I was like, oh, you want some sugar? Like, the way they sell crack. Mm -hmm. And so the mom was like, what? So we're just going to, what, well, the black kid is going to be the one that's the drug dealer trying to sell sugar. Kids shows. And it also, so basically Ariana Grande had a massive show on there. I think it was called Cat and Ali or something like that. She was on there as well. They talked about her, talked about Amanda Bynes. Amanda Bynes, yeah, she's a star. But the way her life has gone, she was under a conservatorship like Britney was. It's a whole, she got a face tattoo. It's a whole thing. She's dealt with like mental health illnesses. It's a whole thing. She is not, when you think about how her life should have gone, it hasn't gone that way. So she had issues as well and whatever else. So basically it talks about, so a lot of the things are very sexualized. So for example, there was a lot of like, Toe fetish, feet fetish things. One of the episodes, Ariana is sucking her own toes. What? This is just casual, casually. So one of the things that was always brought up as well was basically how, so in Zoe 101, that's the one with Jamie Lynn Spears, who is Britney Spears' little sister. There was an episode where there's this other girl, I can't remember her name now, but she was very vocal in talking about all these things. But basically, she they were in a, in a, in a supermarket, in a shop, right? And she wanted to um, open this suite. Like, you know that those kind of... Um, the ones are like a little sachet thing. So we're not opening open the suite and whatnot. But then the scene was that when she tried to open it, it was splash on Jamie's face. Mm. So she was like, they did like a, they had to do like a syringe to get that edit and whatnot. She said when they, when they, when they did it, Dan Schneider was laughing like from the depth of his soul. Everyone else was giggling. And then she said, she said that they heard the guys say, and again, these are kids. She heard the guys say, oh, that's a cum shot. 
So they did stuff like that. They would throw like, they would have like slimy things on the kids' faces all the time, all that kind of stuff. Again, they had Ariana Grande sucking toes. There was also one where basically she was like, um, she wanted to drink water, but then in the episode, and these episodes, some of them are still on Netflix, you know, she's laying upside down trying to drink the water. But obviously the water is spilling all over her, like her top. So it's kind of like giving like, Mm. like sodomy type um what's it called looks kind of mm-hmm. thing also another one she's like oh like so basically her character in the show was like a ditzy like she was kind of slow like dumb kind of thing and so she was like oh do you think i can get um i can squeeze juice out of a potato not a potato t- shaped like a penis and so she's trying to squeeze that she's literally doing that and she's like oh like why is it not coming out oh juice me like, this is the script they gave these kids and so it's just no, don't look it up. And so it's just so wild. It's just it's very it's very it's just very weird. Actually, no, no. So you guys can understand what I'm saying. So if you don't think I'm actually making like, that, it's mad. If you if you got the bandwidth to watch to watch it, mm. I would say you watch because it's it's mad. And it's like and it's like these kids are now adults and they're watching and they're so disgusted that they're watching it. All of that being said, yeah, not them having a pedophile on the flipping set. Well, they had three. They were actually convicted. I'll get to them. The first one, the first guy got got. Um, he was, I think he was, he was an acting coach, or something like that. So basically, there was this girl who went in there to do like she was like a, she did a guest appearance, but he was a lovely guy because again, Peter Fast tend to be they tend to be lovely and sweet and da da da. And again, because they're working with kids, like as a parent who's bringing your child on set and the child is there for hours and whatnot, you kind of feel like, oh, this person's a nice person. I can trust them with my child. Do you know what I mean like my kids are in safe hands? And this poor, this woman. Her daughter was there, and when her daughter was like young, maybe like 11, 10, maybe even 12. But anyway, this is the age ranges of these kids when they're experiencing these crazy, crazy, crazy things. So, anyways, now, are you trying to, have you found a video? If you type in Dan Schneider. No, no, I'm not trying to find a video. I'm trying to find the warning thing. Oh, the chicken. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah so definitely tune out until People's Journal. But um, yeah, basically, basically, what was it? So, uh, what was I saying? What was I saying? Uh, there were pedophiles on set. Yes. To them. Yeah. So this guy was a he was a coach. He was a coaching um, acting coach or whatever it was. So basically, a lot of times he would be with the kids unsupervised in that he would be walking them around set, showing them this, that, whatever, whatever. Anyways, come to find out, so that girl was a she was a guest on a show, whatever. He was just very nice, very lovely. He's like, oh, I'll take your email address down. If there's any roles and blah blah, I will let you know. So her mom was like, oh, she would email him. Like he would be like, oh, how are you doing? How's school? Just very friendly stuff. She knew about the emails. It wasn't anything. She'd be like, oh. Da, 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 messaged me today. I can't remember his name. I wish I remembered his name. She's really shame, pedophile. But anyway, that kind of stuff. One day, the woman was like, how her daughter must have been on the computer, or whatnot. The next thing she screams, runs to her room and shuts the door. Mom follows her, like, oh, what's happened? Da, da, da. Do you know this sicko sent a video of himself naked, masturbating to this 10 year old girl and said he was thinking about her? Mad. So then basically, he got arrested and whatnot. So he got arrested, right? There was another guy on there. That guy, his story is the wildest one. So, sadly, he's the one that uh, that abused um, Drake Bell, mm. as in mad abuse, like mad abuse. So basically, this guy as well was a very like friendly, friendly guy. Like when they all show, so I think they all have like kind of like a yearbook thing, right? Where basically, you know, like how you had in school, where you you know you have a picture of you and your friend, and they sign a message to you. Da da da. He's in all of their stuff. Like he's his name is Brian Peck. He's known so well. Like he's just that guy. All the parents trust him. He's so charming, so da 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 da. But the thing with Drake Bell, with Drake Bell's story is that Drake Bell's dad noticed things about him that he didn't like. Mm. He said he was very touchy feely with the guy, that he would just hold his arm, da da da. But he was always like, why are you touch it? Like, why do you have to make physical contact with my child? Stop doing that, da da da. To the point where now Drake, and then basically they tried to even accuse Drake Bell's dad of being homophobic because they're like, oh no, he's gay, so maybe you're being homophobic. He was like, I didn't know he was gay. But still, I'm not comfortable with him. Mm-hmm. There's even a video actually of the guy because the, the dad said how he would touch Drake's arm, like roll his hand down, roll his hand down his back, and there's actually a video of him doing that to Leonardo DiCaprio as well, because he's he was on Nickelodeon as well. But there's actually a video of him doing that. So he was like he just felt uncomfortable by it. But anyways, now he was his he was his son's manager until like you know taking to auditions after school, all that kind of stuff for years until they were able to get their own show and whatnot. As soon as they get the intro, this guy is now planting seeds in Drake's ear, saying about, oh, your dad shouldn't be your manager. And, you know, parents shouldn't be kids' managers. How many kids do you see coming up with their parents as managers? It's usually 
drives a wedge in the relationship. Also, Drake's parents were getting divorced, so he and his wife weren't getting along at the time anyway. So he basically was driving, like, just saying stuff in the kids' ears, wherever, wherever, wherever. He's like to him, why are you getting involved in stuff with my son? He was also saying, because Drake as well is an, a music artist. Mm -hmm. So outside of the acting, he was also doing his music stuff. But he was like, the guy was always there. Every show, he was like, it's not a thing where, like, the show is, like, down the road. The show can be in a whole other state. Guess who's going to be there? The guy. And he wouldn't just be there to watch him. He would be there, like, following them around, whatever. But the guy was obviously plotting and scheming. Cool. So now um, that happens. Um, Carl Long story short. Drake goes to see his mum one time. He's there for like a week. His mum calls him. That basically, Drake doesn't want you to be his uh, manager anymore. Yeah. But the dad is like, you know what? I just want what's best for my son. If this is what da, 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 da. Cool. That's fine. But she's, he said to the mum, he said, wherever it is, don't leave him alone with that guy. I just don't trust him. Something's weird about him. Cool. That's what the dad said to the, to to the, the mum. Mom. Okay, cool. said, don't leave him around Brian Peck. I just don't trust the guy. I don't like the way he moves. But the thing with like pedophiles and stuff like that, yeah, they're very calculated in that they get you to trust him. So he's very charming, very da da da. So obviously, the mum is seeing him being all nice and whatever, and she's unable to take Drake to every audition. But she's just seen as, oh, this is like a nice guardian. So then the guy starts driving Drake to, um, what's it called, to auditions and whatnot. It was one of those times he abused the child. The child didn't know what to, like, he kind of felt how abused victims will feel in that you feel like shame, you, you don't show if you can mm -hmm. talk about it, you know, da, 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 whatever, whatever. But then it just became a regular thing. Now he then said he, he had a girlfriend. So one time he was at his girlfriend's house and he also, he said he just felt like he had to keep a secret. Couldn't tell anybody, whatever, whatever. He's at his girlfriend's house now. Brian Peck is calling him like, oh, we had plans. And the guys, I think they went to go like, and he would do stuff like take him to Disneyland. So Drake was like, it was a weird thing for him because he was experiencing this thing that he, could, he didn't tell anybody about. But then at the same time, his career was rising where it's like everything he wanted, he'd get to say, it was like, he was just in a weird place. And obviously he's a teen as well going through puberty. Like, it was just weird. And when, the, when the, he was like, he doesn't even know how to voice detail the things that the guy did to him. And then he was just like to the to the um, person recording and people watching. He was like, he's like, imagine the worst thing, imagine the worst thing, the worst sexual assault there is. That's what he did, repeatedly to me, kind of thing. Was he was like, it was very very terrible. So basically, one night he was with his um, girlfriend or whatnot. With his girlfriend's mum was there as well. The guys called him like, oh, we're meant to go to Disneyland. Da, da, da. He would take him to Disneyland regularly, all that kind of stuff, just to kind of keep him sweet, I guess. And he was just like, oh, I'm here. I don't want to go. Um, I can't make a, a double booked kind of thing. But then the guy kept calling him, like calling him, calling him, blowing up his phone regularly. So again, he hasn't told anybody anything like that. Da, da, da. So then the mum, the girlfriend's mum kind of called him. He's like, oh, can I speak to you quickly, um, Drake? Then he, and she was like, why is he calling you like that? Like, what's wrong? Like, I can see that you don't want to mm -hmm. meet up with him. You don't want to go with him. What's wrong? So he was just like, oh, like, no, nothing. I just think, oh, like he makes it feel weird sometimes. Again, not wanting to say that he's been abusing me for this amount of time. So then the woman was like, okay. So the woman then called Drake's mum and was like, listen, something is off with Drake. This person called. I'm reading his body language. Like he's just off. Mm. So she was like, tomorrow I am taking him to my therapist and he needs help kind of thing. Like not even, I'm not even letting you know, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to let you know this is what I'm going to have him with your child. But something is up kind of thing. Even when he was like, even when he went to therapist, he didn't really say much. Da, 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 da. It was a random day. He was speaking to his mum. And he just had an outburst. He said he can't even tell you what triggered it. Mm. And he just told mama everything and whatever. And then his mom called the police. Police come. And so basically the police then needed him to kind of get a confession. So they basically made him call the guy. And then, you know, back then when they had tape recorders and whatnot. <laughs> and then the guy was just like, and the guy confessed. But wait for it. It gets mad. So the guy, he was like to him, oh, all these things. I don't feel comfortable anymore. I thought that. And the guy was just like, oh. I don't know what's going... Like, he basically just confessed to abusing him and all that kind of stuff. Isn't, but he tricked him into it, didn't it? Yeah, so he didn't mm. know he didn't know he was being recorded. Yeah. But then he kept asking Drake, are we being recorded? And Drake was like, no, 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 obviously. But well, the police was right there. Mm -hmm. But they got they had an actual confession that happened. But it's sad because his dad didn't know. So then when he got arrested and whatnot, he then called his dad. He was like, oh, like, they got him. Assuming that his dad knew. And his mm -hmm. dad was like, oh, what do you mean? He's like, oh, like, Brian Peck, he's been arrested for... Da, 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 da. His dad was like, I knew, I knew there's something wrong with him. Um, and then his dad said something that made me, oh, it was so sad. His dad said, I'm just glad that he never got to do that to you. Mm. And See then he I'm was saying? like, in that moment, he didn't even know how to tell his dad that, no, I'm the case that's going to court kind of thing. 
So anyways, now that happened. Um, he went to court. He said when he went to court, yeah, there was like, he was like, back then there wasn't like TMZ. So people didn't, so it was sealed. It was a sealed document. He had, he had other kids from the show calling him like, oh my gosh, did you hear what happened to Brian? Because everyone was shocked. And I remember the, one of them was saying how the way they were told about it was they had like a table read where the parents were there and then they asked the parents and there was like strange people there that they didn't know and which were the police. Mm. But then they told the parents, oh, do you mind just excusing us for a second? And then they told them basically Brian's been arrested because of da 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 um, They can't say who it is. But they were like, if anyone's got information, let us know. But they were like, it was even the way they told them was just weird and whatnot. So none of them actually knew it was Drake Bell, essentially, until this documentary was going to come out. That's what, because it was sealed documents because mm-hmm. it was a minor and he was just known as Jane Doe. Um, anyways, right, the sentencing day comes, right? He goes to court, yeah. On Brian's side, there's like 50 people. Yeah. His side is packed. See? Also, within Hollywood, he had like 41 letters of support. You see them dickheads from Boy Meets World? They wrote character statements for him. Meanwhile, every as in what's 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 that guy's name? The brother. You see the older brother from Boy Meets World. I can't, I can't remember his I name. Can't yeah, I know. You're but he about wrote him. a character statement. The guy. Um, what's his name? What was the Boy Meets World character's name? Mm-hmm. Whatever his name was, anyway. His best friend, the one that was always in prob- always in trouble, wrote a character st- statement for him as well. There's another actor. What's his stupid little name? I can't remember his name now. But he also there's a lot of celebrities that wrote character statements and they were saying about oh. They feel like he must have been tempted. It was a lot of like victim blaming in that. So he said he went to court on his side, as in on Brian, on um, Drake Bell's side, was just him, his mum, and his brother. On the other, on Brian Peck's side was all like was like Hollywood people, mm. top execs, producers, people, that, actors, whatever else. All of them were just right there. Yes. Yeah, so, oh, I can't really see far. But basically, the guy who plays his older brother. Eric Matthews, uh, Will Friedel or Friedel. What was his name in the, in the show? Um, Eric. Yes, Eric. Mm-hmm. And then his best friend. Is it Sean Hunter? Yeah. Sean. Yeah. They were, and then in the character statement, like they're writing stuff like, oh, you know, um, this is not him. He's got a heart of gold. He will never hurt a flight. This is what they're writing for somebody who has done the most outrageous Despicable. and disgusting things. Do you know how much time the guy got? 16 months. Sign confession. Like, not even sign confession. Like, he actually confessed. He got 16 months. And then guess what? He got released. He worked with Disney Channel. Oh, get out of it. This is a joke. He got 16 months and he had to register as a sex offender. It's a joke. He came out of prison and he got a straight, straight away got a job with Disney Channel working on Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Sickening. Then there was another... Because all of them are in it, in it. It's yeah, mad. Exactly. But then there was another guy then, later on as well, that apparently they found out as well was a pedophile. But you know what's mad? That guy was already on a sex offender on offenders leave before he got the job at Nickelodeon. Because Dan Schneider, Dan Schneider basically sat down with some other some coon. I hate when things like this happen and black people are the one to go and be the journalist. Mm-hmm. Some black some black guy who was on a show, iCarly. So basically on iCarly as well, there's a girl, I think I, I talked about it when we started TDA. Her name's um Jeanette Mc, Mc something. Mc, no. But her name's Jeanette. She was a main actress on iCarly. Big, big show on there. Went on to have, went on to have her own spin-off show, whatever. Her, she's got a book, and her book is called I'm Glad My Mum Died. Because mm-hmm. her mum essentially, she never wanted to be the actress or anything like that. Her mum essentially made her do all of that stuff. Her mum was abusive. Her mum was a lot of things, right? Do you know McCurdy? Yeah. yeah, McCurdy. Yeah, that's her. So she also, in her book, she never said someone's name. Mm. But she said there was a top exec, a Nickelodeon, da, 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 who essentially, his sexual fantasies made it, made, worked into the shows. So it's, so basically, when all of that happened, there's been a whole conversation about Dan Schneider, because again, he's the one making them suck toes and whatnot and whatnot. Anyway, there's a there's a there's a black guy who was on iCarly. I don't know his character. I can't remember his name, but his name is Boogie something, right? He was on iCarly. He's now had a sit down, a quick sit down with Dan Schneider, twenty minute interview, right? Absolute bullshit. And my thing is like, there's stuff like, there's something about people coming out, not just one person. Okay. Yes, he's got locks. Yeah, T.O. Yeah. Tebow, Tebow, that's him. Yeah. Absolute coon. There's something about people, especially when it comes to... I don't feel like there's enough child safety. And we saw that when the whole when the whole Balenciaga stuff happens. Like, There's a lot of emphasis for people to have children, but then there's not enough safeguarding for these children in different situations. Because when you think about it, as a kid's channel with kid's shows having sexual innuendos up and down, like in terms of like the girls being sexualized, the boys, stuff like... There was even... So that Brian Peck guy as well, he was known as the pickle guy. 
He would go around with a tray of pickles. And I remember, mm. I remember those scenes actually watching Disney Channel younger would just make them eat like pickles and stuff. All also, pickles are on the show. This is on the Acting. show. On the actual show. As in that Bri- that Brian Peck. That Brian Peck guy. And he would always make people eat pickles. And the way that some of them would like choke on it. The pickles were shaped as penises. So when you think about it, it's so mad. So there's something about then all these all these kids that are now adults being brave enough to come out and call this out. Mm. And then you sit there and you say, Well, every time I've always met you, you've always been very nice to me. I've always had a good time on set. No one cares about that. If you're friends with me, you're not friends with me. I know like um, Kel Mitchell and Keenan, Keenan Thompson, mm. I think they're still cool with um, Dan Schneider or whatever. But honestly, if you want to be cool with me, that's fine. Because mm. you had a good experience with me, that's fine. But no one wants to hear your voice in this moment yeah. when there's endless and endless of evidence of these people talking about sexual assault and all this stuff when they were kids. A lot of them grew up to be alcoholics. A lot of them grew up to be on drugs. A lot of them had to go to rehab. Drake Bell, them, the, the, the black guy... A lot of them, their lives were like literally damaged on account of these shows. So that coon anyway sat down with Dan Schneider. Dan Schneider is sitting there talking about, oh, also another thing he always did. So he was also very sexist. So basically there was no female writers there. He hired two female writers, made them, made, allegedly made them share a salary. They didn't get paid individually. He made them share a salary. And then also when they were in the writing rooms and whatnot, he's apparently always said that he didn't think women were funny. So they have to kind of like prove how funny you are then. Write, write a script, whatever. And then he would make them, um, they would always make like very inappropriate sexual jokes in there, wherever. There was one of the women where um, she was pitching something mm. and he was like, oh, say that as if you're being sodomized. This is what he said. In the boardroom. Bloody hell. So that woman, any, anyway, I think she ended up, I don't know, she, I think she got fired or something anyway. Then the other one at some point just just quit as well. There was another woman on there who she was like, she had to work from day, dawn to dusk. Like, she was at the hours where because she was the editor, and she said she would be there for hours. Like she wouldn't even, she wasn't even, she couldn't even go to the toilet. Mm. She would like, I need to go to the toilet to pee. He would be like, oh, can you just finish what you're doing for? Like very, and apparently he was very aggressive, very mean, calling people stupid, calling them idiots, like very like that. One time she passed out at the workplace. She said they had to call an ambulance. As they're wheeling her out, she's hearing somebody saying, oh, who's gonna finish the editing then? And then she was like, oh, I, I, she's like, I, I remember saying, I'll be back soon, I'll be back soon. That's the kind of situation that they had. That was going on over there. Anyway, Dan Standard basis. And then also, yes, yeah, sorry, another thing. He was making them give him massages. He was always getting a massage on set. One of the women actually said that she remembers she was she worked in the costumes department. She remembers trying to sort stuff out, like had a lot of things to sort out, a lot of work mm. to do. And he had texted her phone saying, Come and give, can you come on set? Give me a massage. And um, she said she was telling her colleague, like, oh my gosh, like. Doesn't know I have serious things to do. Da, da, da. Like all of them, every single person said that was the one thing. If they remember nothing else, they remember this man being rubbed down regularly on set. And there's so many videos and so many pictures of this happening. Anyway, he sat down with this black coon and he basically said how, yeah, you know, he regrets the way that he was moving. It was out of order. It wasn't nice. And, you know, he's sorry that he made people feel uncomfortable. Um, that shouldn't have been his thing, especially as he was the root exec. He had a... He had, a, he had a responsibility to take care of them, blah, blah, blah. Because even Drake Bell, Drake Bell says that when the Brian Peck stuff happened, Dan called him and was like, oh, did it, Dan? He basically, and he said he was actually, like, he was, he found, he he trusted Dan so he could tell him. And he was like, yeah, that whole, he's essentially all, everything that's in court now mm. is about me. And Dan was like, I'm so sorry to hear that. If you need anything from me, let me know. How are you doing? Da, da, da. So he was nice to Drake, but obviously Drake is a star. Mm. Star child. They basically said they all a lot of them said that if you weren't like if you were the star, he would yeah. you get favorable favorable treatment. Anybody else, you just have to see how it goes, kind of thing. Um so yeah, in the interview he basically talks about how, yeah, you know, he apologizes for making people feel uncomfortable. That's not the right way to be a boss. If he could go back as well, he would he would have been nicer and speaking to people a lot nicer. There was also a period where basically the actors basically say that um Nickelodeon actually banned him from being on set. Of filmings, he said that that's a lie. He said that he was one who chose to not be on set because he wanted to write, he wanted to do some writing and whatever else. Um, he said a bunch of nothing, he said a bunch of nothing. And that coon sat there and was like, Oh, yeah, because I remember like you were very nice. And basically, he was like, Oh, yeah, you were very lovely. Da, da, da. He's like, Oh, I called you. So basically, the interview happened because he called Dan to check in on how Dan was doing. Mm. And he said, Oh, you dance, have a conversation. Of course, Dan would be down to have a conversation with a black man. We would. And he was like, Oh, yeah, I remember. He was like, Oh, yeah, because. It was like um, how um, you had shows where there was black, you know, current leads. Like obviously, Kingdom and Kill, black lead and whatnot. He's like, yeah, you had shows like that. 
da da da. Dan was like, yeah, I was one of the first people to actually put black leads in place, da 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 da, whatever, whatever. A bunch of foolishness. I've never seen anything more disgusting in my life. It was just so sad. And it's like stuff with abuse, like it doesn't go away. It stays with you. And a lot of these kids are like adults now who are still in, a lot of them are still in therapy, dealing with these things, trying to find some kind of peace. Because again, there was times where they basically turned to substance abuse, trying to forget stuff. Like, do you get what I mean? Like there was not enough care. Mm. But honestly, the things are just disgusting. And he's just mad that he, that Brian Peck guy got hired to be around children, even though he was on the sex offenders list. But then again, Nickelodeon hired somebody. And then Dan basically just said that he's not the one involved in hiring and whatever. He said how, even with the women that said that they were sharing a salary, he was like, oh, that's normal in Hollywood sometimes. If you've got a budget for one and there's two, if you ask them, are they okay with it? He was like, oh, men have done it. Women have done it. It's not a thing. Um, bullshit. And obviously in 2018 as well, the, Nickelodeon basically asked him to step down. He's saying that it was a, it was a peaceful separation. But obviously there was a lot of word in industry because that was around the, that happened when the Me Too thing was happening. Mm. He got, he got, he got, he was stepped down when the whole Me Too thing was happening. Bill Cosby, um, Harvey Weinstein, all that stuff was literally Kevin, St Kevin Spacey. When it was like big, hmm. all of a sudden that's when this man is going to step down from something he's been doing for like 20 plus years. Okay. So they didn't want to come man. down with him? Isn't no, it? I guess they didn't, yeah, because they'd be liable for a lot, wouldn't they? Yeah. Honestly, it was horrible. It was horrible. And, it, and you know what? It, it, it's sickening because when you think about like as a child, like as a child, because as an adult now, there's a lot of stuff I watch and I'm like, oh, that's a bit weird. Like you, you can understand the meaning to it. But when you think that these kids were in a room filled with adults and they were acting out these sexual um, sexual positions even some in some of the things, sexual positions. Like I remember in the iCarly one, there was one time where her friend on the show is called Freddie. And I think she was trying to climb up on, on something. So he's behind her trying to help her, but he's not really helping her. So it just looks like they're like a doggy position. And she's like, oh, like, come on. Like, it's like the things that they were saying mm. is mad. It's mad and disgusting. So really at the bottom, even if you want to say that you had a great experience with Dan Snyder, the question is, why on earth as an adult did you have these kids like with scripts that have sexual innuendos? Like heavily in every episode, in one way or another, it's mad. It's mad. It's so mad. But obviously, and there's been people saying that, oh, no, Ariana Grande should come out and say, no, I don't believe in stuff like that. I don't believe in, because I feel like with all this, because a lot of them, a lot of them would have suffered some form of abuse or whatever it is in those environments. And I don't think it's right to pressure people to speak up about things that they, they're not ready to, if they're not ready to, or if they never, if they, if, and if, they, if she never wants to talk about it, she's also within her rights to never talk about it. Mm. I don't think it's right for, to, pressure people to talk about these things for your entertainment because as you as so if you're watching it and you can't relate to that experience it's just entertainment to you you're just watching it and you're taking it and then you get to move on with your life but these people have to live as they've been living with the things that happened to them and then now the whole um media attention of this again it brings up old wounds so you don't get to dictate to people to relive their trauma before because you want tea mm. it's not right it's horrible it's not right I know there's people, people in like Keenan's um, comments, all their comments now, obviously Kel, Kel is a pastor now. In all their comments, we were like, oh, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? What? And I just think the people that wanted to speak have spoken. I just leave it as that. If you want to support people, support them. If you don't want to support somebody because you feel like they should have stood up for the truth or whatever, then that's within you. But being able to speak about sexual assault, or any form of assault that you faced is a big thing. But... Yeah, man, it was really sad. Like, it's it's so sad because I remember, like, watching these shows and it's just entertainment to me. But then it's something, there's something about knowing that the people that were that were bringing me this entertainment were suffering. Mm. It's disgusting, man. Like, it was honestly so sad. Like, their parents are on the... Doc some of their parents are in the documentary as well. Like, upset, crying. Like, mm. that to feel like you, that you helped your child with their exactly. dream... And then yeah. this irreversible thing has happened to them. Like, you've got to live it. Like, Drake Bell's dad broke my heart, man. Like, yeah. so sad. So, so sad. But it was horrible, man. But if you can stomach stuff like that, watch it. But it it was just, the industry is just disgusting, man. Disgusting, man. This And this is what I always say when like, people talk about sex. I just, I, I just don't think sex is sex. Like, I've been talking about, well, actually, it's more my private account. But... 
stuff about like that conversation about like casual sex. I just feel like sex is just such a it's such a deep thing that I just don't believe is just something to just throw away. Because when you think about at the heart of so much this the horrible things in the world, sex is at the root of it. How have you got kids sucking toes? Do you know how mad that is? Making sexual jokes, pouring water on themselves, like squeezing things and all that stuff. Like it's mad. Even like some of the costumes they will wear had like penis shaped things on them. Horrible. Very horrible. Whew. Anyway, I did my research. Four episodes of that crap. The damn, damn shame. It's horrible, man. I Honestly, but I, I mean, I think it's a great thing they've spoken up mm-hmm. and they've done that. And hopefully there's some kind of safeguarding put in place for children. But I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But even, even if it's going to expose more weird pedophiles and abusers, then I hope it does do that. But I hope there's consequences for that because getting 16 months in prison and then coming out to an even bigger job than where you left. Because at the time, Disney Channel was kind of like a rival for Nickelodeon. So anyway, Brian Peck is going to get the eternity he deserves and all them other pedophiles. But yeah, we're drained. That was Ooh, it. That was amazing. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Very much for... That was comprehensive. It was Thank you so indeed. much. All right, let's get into people's... Light in the mood. Let's get into people's journal. <laughs> All right, people, welcome to the People's Journal. I'll give you the news from an economics point of view. So I've got a few things to talk about. Um, first thing is the Bank of England. Mm-hmm. You know, every month they meet to kind of discuss, you know, a plethora of different things. But one of the main things is the interest rate, whether it should go up, whether it should remain mm-hmm. um, on hold, or if it should go down. Long story short, um, people are expecting that they're going to be holding the interest rate at 5.25% for the fifth time in a row today. So... We're gonna we're gonna find out anyway, um, what their decision is. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's basically expected to be cautious, as in they're going to be cautious about you know certain things, um, even though the inflation figures for um, currently have gone down. Yeah. Apparently, I also saw another um, another article speaking about how mortgage rates have now dropped drastically mm-hmm. because of you know yesterday's um, news about inflation rates. Infl- inflation going down and everything. But again, like I just said, um, it appears that people are saying that they, they expect that these people will be uh, quite cautious and try to maintain um, the interest rate at 5.25%. So it's not the, the best, especially for those on trackers, um, mortgage uh, trackers. Um, next thing I wanted to mention is um, next. Apparently, because there's, a, um, th- well, this is what they're saying anyway, there seems to be a fall in, in the cost of goods. They're looking at actually reducing the price of some of their, their, their clothes. Good, man. Yeah. I used to work mm-hmm. at Next. Next cost me nice stuff. <laughs> yeah, man. They said that. Good. Mm-hmm. So it was anticipating some relief for, you know, for, for, for the customers, um, despite a 60 million pounds hit from rising uh, wage bills and stuff. And they pretty much made the prediction while revealing a 5% rise in their pre-tax profits over the 12 months to the end of January and <laughs> their profits were 918 million pounds. So yeah, they're, they're doing well, man. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, Reddit as well, apparently they're going to be making, well, the shares, shares in Reddit will be making their market debut later today, actually, um, after a sale, which values now the Reddit itself at $6.4 billion, which is about five billion pounds. Mm. So yeah, man, the, the company's IPO, the initial public offering, was priced at the top of its target range of um, $31 to $34 per share on Wednesday night, which meant that it was raising, it raised uh, £748 million. Pounds. So yeah, um, yeah, that's, that's, there's not much more to it, basically. Just that Reddit and its existing shareholders, they sold 22 million shares at $34 um, per share. And yeah, that's what's going on, man. So the trading is going to be beginning um, on the New York uh, Stock Exchange when it opens for business later today. And then we'll, we'll see what happens pretty much. Um, next thing I wanted to mention is um, that uh, women affected by the rise in state pension age could be in line for compensation. So apparently an ombudsman has been looking at the potential injustices 
um, that resulted from the decision to raise the women's retirement age uh, to bring it in line with what the men's is. Um, yeah, so that's basically what it is. And obviously, we, I, f- I feel like we kind of touched on this um, on the show. If not, we probably will do at some point. Um, just speaking about how the fact that people are, are just living longer. So it's looking like, obviously, state pensions are going to be um, delayed a bit. And people, the age at which you can receive that state pension um, currently is at 66, but it may increase. Long story short, for those who were kind of caught in the in the middle, who were obviously ex- expecting that they, they will get their pension sooner, but now it's been increased to, to be in line with men, they they may be due to get some compensation. So yeah, that's basically what's going to happen. So campaigners for um, WASPI, which is Women Against State Pension Inequality, they want the ombudsman to suggest compensation of £10,000 or more for each of them. So yeah, obviously we'll see what happens. Um, the ombudsman can only recommend the compensation, they can't actually enforce it, but obviously um, it may help them in that particular plight. Next thing I wanted to mention is the BBC's found out, you know, the BBC likes to dig. And what they found out, especially, you know, this whole post of a scandal. Mm-hmm. So apparently, it's, it's, it's so sad, you know, what, what happens to certain people, you know. Um, obviously, this is, you just heard what you just said in, in Word on Road. But an, an, an expert witness apparently was asked by the post office, as in the word, a prosecutor for the post office, yeah, yeah. Um, to consider changing his testimony to avoid a damaging concession. Mm-hmm. So, because of that, so this guy, is, he, he's an engineer, right? A Fujitsu engineer for this particular software thing. Right, his name's Gareth Jenkins, right? So he he actually now rephrased parts of his report on that particular um, system, you know, yeah. the, the scandal thing. The, the Horizon IT uh, system. Um, because of the advice that he got from this from the barrister, Warwick okay. um, Tatford. So this evidence was then used in 2010 against a postmistress who goes by the name of Seema Misra, and she was then wrongly jailed while she was pregnant. Wow. Yeah, because they asked him to change his thingy, and he, did it. he went ahead and did it. So yeah, did they even pay him. They, they probably did. Probably did. Probably gave him a bit extra. No change. Look at. That's can you imagine man. the woman's completely innocent? You know, this is all because the software was faulty. Can all they sue in this innocent. country? I don't think they sue enough in this country for me. <laughs> they don't. Yeah, they don't. They don't. The government seems to still be trying to make things right. Yeah. Well, all, all of them are going are gonna to be compensated. But it's just that we're seeing a lot more of the underhanded tactics that went on. Um, and I believe this might be the last or the second to last thing I want to mention. Um, mm, actually, you know what? Apparently, there's some flights that are going to be going to sell EasyJet. Um, yeah, EasyJet. They're launching their winter flights tomorrow morning. Which, yeah, either tomorrow morning or, or today, basically, this morning. Okay. Um, yeah, so long story short, if you want to get in and get some cheap flights, yeah, go and check in it. So basically, they're releasing millions of flights um, between the 1st of December 2024 and the 2nd of March 2025. Um, so yeah, you can go on, um, I believe, yeah, yeah, today from 9 a.m. And um, yeah, you can potentially bet, um, get yourself a good deal. But the last thing I wanted to mention really is this thing here. And this is some bad news for those who are chocolate lovers. Easter eggs. So obviously you would have seen already for, for a while now that Easter eggs are going to be all over the bloody supermarkets, right? All over the mm-hmm. place. But just in case you haven't recognized, right, the Easter eggs are actually shrinking. Yes, they are. They are shrinking. Not only that, they're getting more expensive. <laughs> you know what? Everyone's a scammer, you know. Damn scammers. Mm-hmm. They're basically saying that climate change is the reason. No, that's a lie. <laughs> that's a damn lie. We've been climate changing for years. The dinosaurs and them were around. <laughs> Been climate changing. That is so cheeky. Yeah. How can you make a mini? I'm gonna get a mini pack of mini eggs today. Mm. How do you make a mini egg mini? <laughs> That's wild. I think it's more so the the regular size oh, Easter eggs. Lies. Mm-hmm. They're ridiculous. Because remember back in the day, you used to have the regular one. You have a mini version of those. Yep. Remember, I remember the little Smarties ones. I have Smarties. I mm-hmm. bet you they're hollow now. They don't put no Smarties in that. Yeah, Before you used to shake them. the box. And you uh, hear the smiles. Yep, yep. I bet there's no smiles mm-hmm. in there no more. Because they started putting, putting them into like little packs. Yeah. And they started with like four packs. Then we got three. I might might my get one little pack of Smarties. That's so cheeky. It's a damn shame, man. Yeah. Scammers. Funny you mentioned Smarties because the Smarties um, ah. chocolate orange egg, right? That's changed from being um, 226 grams. Mm. Now it's 188 grams. That's a big difference. Yep. Mm-hmm. You can get it at Asda and Tesco if you want to. Twix as well, their, their Easter egg went down from 246 grams. If you're to eating Twix, you deserve whatever happens. <laughs> 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 you 
chocolate. You deserve something to define the size you find in there. <laughs> Twix is elite chocolate, man. <laughs> it's a bit too much going on. <laughs> Caramel biscuit. Which nah, one are you? Twix is elite. Nah, man. Tell, tell her, Emmanuel. I like Twix, man. <laughs> <laughs> is that like a vegan? How about you like Twix? In a part. In a part. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Snickers man. is the best, but Twix is up there. I only started liking Snickers recently. Mm. Some Twix are just a bit too much. They're you know, just doing too much. Nah. <laughs> I do want to get Ferrero Rocher egg though, because I had this idea years ago. I never pitched it to the company, but basically, around like you see the egg, mm. it's got bits of an act. It's like a Ferrero Rocher yeah, yeah, chocolate, okay, but it's yeah. the egg. Mm. I saw this one. I was like, oh my gosh! I had an Easter egg in years. How much is that? Do you remember? Too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it looked like it was close to double figures because it's a big box as well. Yeah. So yeah. if you're telling me what you're telling me, that means I'm going to open a big box yeah. and find a little egg. Mm-hmm. But isn't that more damaging for um, climate change because all this packaging? Yeah, At least but, I recycle. Yeah, but they don't care about that. They don't care Silly about man. that. You know what I mean? But yeah, pretty much like, like you just reminded me, um, climate change, they're pretty much saying is basically um, there's a humid heat wave that's obviously messing up all the crops and um, obviously reducing the amount of yields that these um, countries... And basically being able to 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 get from their cocoa in West Africa, predominantly West Africa. Um, so yeah, they're saying um, it's made the the extreme heat ten times more likely. This particular um, human induced climate change. So it's not a regular things. Us that's causing it, man. So yeah. So what they're saying is, on average, well, this is according to the Watchdog, which they're saying pop, some of the popular eggs have risen in price by fifty percent or more. So guys expect to be paying fifty percent or more. And or getting Easter eggs that are just smaller in size as well. It's a damn shame, man. It's a damn shame. Um, but yeah, that's I pretty bet they, much it. I bet they don't come in mugs anymore. Because they used yeah. to come in mugs, remember? I, I think that time is gone, you know. That's crazy. Years, I had a yeah. few mini eggs and yeah. uh, mugs. My favorite chocolate. Well, yeah. Easter version. It's a damn shame. I used to, I used to like going to the shop the day after Easter. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. Always on and sale. Mm-hmm. Oh. We got my brother then. My brother used to do that. Like he was always, he would always be so efficient in getting us Easter eggs. Mm. So sweet. Yeah, man, that yeah. ain't it, man. But yeah, that's, that's it for People's Journal. All right, let's get to our last headlines for today. All right, people. Ooh, is this... One second. Yes. Okay. Trigger warning on the last two guys. Trigger warning. Um, a gender critical teacher who refused to use a student's preferred pronouns in class in a classroom has told a tribunal that he believes transgender ideology is a cult. So Kevin Lister is 60 years old and he was dismissed for gross misconduct in September 2022 by New College Swindon following complaints by two students. Um, he had refused to refer to a biologically female student, age 17 by their now preferred male name and um, he and him pronouns in an A-level lesson, right? Ms. Lister has taken the college to an, to an employment tribunal claiming unfair dismissal, discrimination or, dis- or victimization on the grounds of religion or belief and that he suffered a detriment and or dismissal due to exercising rights under the Public Interest Disclosure Act. So Mr. Lister denied that he had violated dignity in a public way and caused distress. He also went on to say, I believe the student was immersed in a cult I believe transgender ideology is a cult and should be and should not be encouraged and is supported in schools. So the hearing continues and obviously we'll keep you updated on that. And our last headline, like I said, big trigger warning on this one. And um, unidentified assailants have taken the lives of 15 individuals in South Sudan's people region, including the commissioner. Um, yeah, this was put out by the senior official, by a senior official on Wednesday. This incident marks an escalation of violence within the country. South Sudan battling with internal conflicts has faced significant turmoil since gaining independence from Sudan. The fatal attack occurred on Tuesday as the commissioner of Boma County in Pibor was returning from a village uh, visit. Abraham Kelang, who's the information minister of Greater Pibor Administrative Area, came out and said that the commissioner and his team visited Niat village and upon their return, they were ambushed, resulting in the deaths of 15 individuals, including the commissioner. Kilang indicated that the perpetrators are suspected to be youths from the Anuak um, community within that region. Those killed include Bomba's deputy armed com- commander, government officials and the, co- and the commissioner's bodyguards. Sad, man. And yeah, but that's it for... Headlines, time to pay the bills. Right, let's get into the reaction. 
All right, guys, there's not much to react to today, you know. But I was saddened when I saw this, man. This is just, there's a lot of crap that's going on. Trigger warning. Can you imagine trigger warning in the reaction? In the reaction? Yeah. Oh, man. So, yeah, a court has ruled that the former Manchester City and Real Madrid forward Robinho must serve a nine year rape sentence wow. in his home country of Brazil. Yeah, man. But you remember about the whole, what's that other guy? Barcelona, right back. Uh, Alves? Yes, he got caught up in some nonsense as well, wasn't it? Quite a few of them, man. Yeah, you see, look at this. It's sad, man. I don't know why these people are behaving like this. Anyway, Robinho, who was 40 years old, was found guilty by an Italian court in 2017. Ginger, when you're 40, is a hard day. (laughs) (laughs) That's a a hard day. Yeah, it's very sad, man. But yeah, he was found guilty by an Italian court in 2017 of taking part in the 2013. Trigger warning, guys. Gang rape. Of a 22 year old nah, for Albanian the away. woman. Yeah. That's horrible. Yeah, he's been living in Brazil, which does not extradite its nationals. So judges in Brazil ruled on Wednesday that he should serve his sentence in Brazil following a request from Israel from Italy, not Israel. Um he will remain free pending a possible appeal against the rulings, is what the lawyer said. But yeah, it's, it's some sad man. That's what's gonna be happening. They they're not extraditing him, but he's gonna be having to do his time. And rightfully so, man. Um, yeah, for those who don't know, he was a former Brazil international. Um, he had 100 caps for his country. He played for AC Milan at the time of the crime. Um, hence, been it happening in Italy. After being found guilty, he lost an appeal in 2020 before um, Italy's highest court upheld his sentence in 2022. And then the Italian prosecutors then issued an international arrest warrant for him. But yeah, that's what happened, man. So the footballer who spent two years with Manchester City told a Brazilian network on Sunday that the sex was consensual. But obviously, what in a gang? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, that's what he's saying. But yeah, obviously, the the court have ruled against him, and that's what the situation is, man. So yeah, but yeah, unfortunately, that's that's it for the reaction. There's nothing else. It's just a bunch of internationals, really. That England ain't even playing today. Mm. So yeah, just a bunch of internationals. But that's it for the reaction, pretty much. Wonderful. Thank you. Let's get into our outro. All right, people, thank you for tuning in. Um, apologies for the heavy topics today. Um, do take as much time as you need to to pull back into yourself if you felt triggered by anything we talked about today. But big up all of you guys that tuned in. Our lovely callers, Dr. Amani and Ruby Tuesday, who bring mm-hmm. calls Ruby Wednesday. <laughs> big up you guys. Um, also, big up our, our babe. I wish I knew her. What's her name that has a dog in her bed? There's many different names, you know. One of them, Saka. Saka's big, big sis. Big up Saka's big sis, all right? Mm-hmm. Big up Saka's big sis. All said and done. Gag folks. <laughs> <laughs> Never been in charges, you know? It's always going to come for you. When it's all said and done, we appreciate you, girl. But um, big up our researchers as well, our lovely editors, all that great stuff. Follow us on our social media platforms, The Day After TNB, mm-hmm. on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Discord. That's it. Also, please don't forget to like the video. We're nearly at 5K subscribers. Mm-hmm. So if we can make that happen, that'd be wonderful. Yeah. I wonder if some of you watch and you haven't subscribed. If you do, don't I think be that's a... that's the case, you know. I reckon people do. Some people just kind of tune in. Like, because we're, we're always at the algorithm, they, just, they don't have to do much. You just click on there. Mm-hmm. But subscribe, all right? Help this lovely channel grow. Whose kid is that? The child is crying outside. It's Mark, isn't it? What's your problem? What's wrong with you? <laughs> that's the I only, see why you don't think the way I think. That's the only recent kid. Because <laughs> my inner voice told me not to say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so follow us on social media. If you want to send dilemmas in, the number is 075 6484 1073. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, Brent. What now? No, what do you know now? Something. I'm a bit apprehensive. Bit, no. What is it? Let me show you. Saka sauce. You seen that, right? Is Nando's sauce? No. Nah. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, you partnered up with Nando's. And okay. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, he's um he's changing the game. To be honest, why don't you feel that way about it? Look at this. What a what a handsome man. He's so sweet, man. And do you do you, do you know what he's mixed up? He mixed up ketchup and it's mixed up barbecue sauce. 
I think this is a nice sauce. It will go good with chicken. Oh, you know, I think a burger sauce. I think, it, no, ketchup and, and mayo is burger sauce. It will go nice with chicken. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this isn't like your nearest Tesco and stuff? Huh? Is that your nearest Tesco? I don't know. I don't know. I think it's going to be in all Nando's. I'm not sure if it's, okay. in, it's on the shelves yet. That's wonderful, you know. I love that for him. Of course, of course, of course. Yeah, man. Big up Saka. Yeah, big up Saka, man. Look at that. It looks lovely. Okay. When it, what, Does it have a date? When it, when it gets for what I'm, I'm going to try it. I think it mm-hmm. might already be in um in the shops. In them, in them shops yeah. As well. yeah, I'm gonna in try the restaurants. it. Restaurants. Well done, Saka. I'm gonna try and I'm gonna come back. Mm-hmm. Big up Saka, man. I have all the time there is for Saka. Yep, yep, yep. Love that, love that, love that. Um I got something for you soon, sir. <laughs> that sounds wild. <laughs> no, 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 as in well, Yeah, I know, you know, I know what you know. I let me mean, let me clarify because I don't please. like what you did just, uh, just now. I, I, just I only did what you would have done. I only did what you would have done. I'd call him a, a nice little entrepreneur and you know, a business and savvy. What, no, I said I've got something for you very soon. Yes, you do have something for him very soon. You're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you miss E-Man's face. He said, I'm crazy. <laughs> well, I guess we're all crazy in this room. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> You're the craziest of them all. <laughs> <laughs> you are the leader. Anyways, if you want to inquire about the show, featuring the show, our email address is thedayafteratthenewblack.com. Brent. Also, Chelsea might be penalised very soon. This is football? Yeah. Team. With all of this spending. I think what is being suggested yeah. is that they have to sell 100 million worth of players before June or July. Mm. As in the June and July coming up? In, yeah, yeah. in three months? Around the corner, yeah. Damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, still be penalised. So I'm looking forward to all that. Important on that news. It's going to be good conversation. Mm. Yeah. Greek. Mm. All right. Well, people, mm-hmm. we'll be back here tomorrow. Have a great Thursday. Peace.